<laughs> Not the shuttle. Shuttle. Surprise. Whoa. Oh, that's fantastic. So good. If what the actual fuck was a movie, out of the mist and into the fog, it's Shuttle the Pod. Greetings, curious club members, and welcome to our little horror movie club known as Chuddle the Pod, where we like to sit around the digital campfire, chat about, rate, discuss the gooiness, or as we like to say, have a chuddle about horror movies old and new. Tonight we open our toy chest to find our friend till the end as we discuss 1988's Child's Play. Before we get to that, I got some beautiful co-occupants joining me as always. Rossy Poo, how are you? Oh hey, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Welcome back. Thank oh, you for it's, being here. I'm glad to be. Thank you for having me. You, it's always a pleasure. Sam, what's up? How how are you? Good. Welcome back. Thank you. We're Thank saying you welcome back. Me. I mean, this is our first official recording into the new year, so we'll get that. That's true. Yep, yep. 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 It's going to be real rusty. There's going to be cobwebs all over the place. Well, or we're, we're going to come back sounding weeks. real fresh and hot. Oh, and that's then, true. And then I slowly so going to peter out and <laughs> kind of just be... What's happening right now? Like this. We're already getting <laughs> that shit. Right it's, it's going too quick. All right. And I, Brian, huh, uh, am your delegate of debauchery for tonight's meeting. Now, you may think the gentlemen are being foolish tackling this movie by themselves, but have no fear. You know them from their podcast. You know them from their YouTube. You know them from the streets. It's the one, the only, the horror bandwagon. Hey! hey. And goo noises yes. and all that. And Tony, Sergio, welcome back. Chuddle, Thank you. Chuddle, chuddle, chuddle. That's how we enter. Like, chuddle, <laughs> chuddle, chuddle. I think chuddle, some people chuddle. might know you from the streets. I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to say, uh, welcome back, guys. It's good to see you here. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> Yeah, good to be seen. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing that you're tackling another franchise with us. Here we are. Are they? I mean, well, well, we're, at we're, least this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't no. commit them to anything. Yeah, we just we just we're just doing in this episode. Right here. We'll see where the, the wins <laughs> take just, us. I was, I, was, I was just trying to get them on air to say yes, we're, of course, sure, we'll be on every single we're one. We're kicking it off. We're we're, yes. we're we're starting it off with a bang. That's right. I like it. A horror. Bang! Oh, that is that is. Um, that's only our name on Saturday nights. I accidentally typed that in. Yeah. For those who are looking it's, for the hard bang wagon, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Maybe summer 2024. We booked the wrong guess again. <laughs> no. We've been trying to get the horror bang wagon. Bang. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right we can't forget as well about our beautiful wonderful coven of witches our patreon uh we love you guys so much your sacrifice gives us life and we thank your beautiful souls uh we got a lot going on in there we just recorded a new mailbag episode for them mm. uh ross and sam and i hung out the other night we did a little coven watch along thing mm -hmm. of new year's evil, evil. with some coven yeah. members in there there's lots of evil impersonations <laughs> it was a good time and that was like all levels we were just like good fuck it you're in the coven come on in you don't need to be you know mm -hmm. yeah whatever but we got the levels we got the tears three six nine they're all fine they give you a whole bunch of good stuff in there Ooh, and that sounded ooh. sexy oh my god that was cool. you're making that me want really to cancel good. my subscription and resubscribe <laughs> 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 Now, with all of tonight's club members present and accounted for, it's time to crack open the goo book and officially begin tonight's meeting. Give me that goo. Oh, yeah. I, uh, oh, it always gets me. <laughs> that brain itch. Why, that it's so good? It's just, it just, it, it's like that uncanny valley where I'm just like, is that me? Is that how it sounds <laughs> like? <laughs> well, that, that was who like, am I? Who am coming I? off of sickness too, so that and was sick voice. That was my sick voice as well. And that, that's the trick. I gotta get deathly ill to get to that level. <laughs> <laughs> and to then perform. let us know when you're next deathly ill and we'll hire you to you do some it. sound Voice drops. over work, yeah. Absolutely. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, we could also, you know, have a, a, a 
I'd, I'd, I'm going to welcome this to any Chuddle listener out there. If you want to send in a give me the goo of your own, Ooh, I will oh. use it on an episode. So oh, look at this guy. <laughs> G- nice. give me look at your, that. give me the goo. <laughs> give right. me your, give me your best. Give me that goo. <laughs> <laughs> Make it. Yeah. I'll take the fucking morning radio sound bite. I'll take whatever you got. Spooky and weird. Give it, g- give us all the goo you got. Now, first order of business for tonight will be our spoiler free Goonopsis. <laughs> a struggling <laughs> single mother unknowingly gifts her son a doll imbued with a serial killer's consciousness. And I looked up some of our toe taglines for this one. No one believes the truth or lives to tell it, which is kind of weak. He oh, wants yeah. you for a new best friend. Okay, that's a little bit like more on, on yeah. brand. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're getting there. This was on the VHS release poster. Chucky did it. No. <laughs> no. Spoiler alert. Right. We don't fucking. Uh, okay. <laughs> when people have nightmares, they dream of Freddy. When Freddy has nightmares, he dreams of Chucky. <laughs> I don't know if that's that even true. <laughs> that's a stretch. That's a little confusing. Wow. wow. What? Wow. But this, like. So many reasons. Yeah. It's just to pull on another serial right, killer right. and hey, make them scared of Chucky. Like, you love yeah. Freddy, right? Yeah. He's scared of this guy. Oh, shit. You'll wish. <laughs> it was only make-believe. Fine. That works. That's all right. That's Andy good. Barclay has a new playmate who's in no mood to play. Sure. God. This doll is God, killer. No. And then <laughs> that sounds like a like a like a buddy comedy. Like yeah. uh, <laughs> he's got a new partner who doesn't want to play. He doesn't take <laughs> any nonsense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, that could be the sequel that you want to see out of, you know, where Child's oh, Play oh, 2 oh, yeah. goes. Child's oh, Play 2 so, so, so think on that. Movie. Think of, think of what up, you want, yes. want coming from this. Yeah. Andy Barclay um, was a simple six-year-old boy on the verge of retirement. <laughs> 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 Chucky is one mean sob. Okay, so, right. facts, I mean, I guess I don't know for I mean, some sequ- of them for a sequel. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Really calling out the character because it's amazing that there's this many t- taglines. Yeah, that's amazing for the like. Yeah, yeah I don't know where film. they different were all releases. ultimately pulled from. Yeah. Different oh, releases, yeah. different yeah. posters. Maybe I don't yeah, know if there's yeah. like. Ultimately, some, my choice is. He wants you for a best friend. That's the one, right? That's for a new. But he wants you, you for, for a new, new best, best friend. friend. I like that one. I, I'll keep ominous. it ominous. Yeah, and creepy. you is like capitalized at least in this iteration. So Ooh. I imagine this being like a um a, p- a poster of Chucky, oh like as Uncle Sam. Yes, Sam. I was gonna say oh. Uncle Sam pose. I didn't even think of that. Oh, that's there we good. go. That's and good. and there, there's the shirt. That's your new go. best friend. You know that was in the trailer. I'm sure it was exists. That in the trailer, whatever. I hope. Well, I hope so. <laughs> All right, making this one coming in, we got directed by Tom Holland, and this is written by Don Mancini, and we got other credits for that with John Lafia and Tom Holland as well. Catherine Hicks playing Karen Barclay, Chris Sarandon as Mike Norris, Alex Vincent as Andy Barclay, Brad Dorff as Charles Lee Ray, a.k.a. Chucky. Uh, Dina Manoff, Maggie uh, Peterson, uh, a few other people popping in here, but those are kind of our big, big cast players. There. Yeah, got Chris Sarandon <laughs> from uh, Princess Bride, Humperdinck. Humperdinck, correct. Uh, also, so, uh, Fright Night. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, which is another Tom Holland directed picture. Also, a Nightmare um, Before Christmas. He played the voice of Jack. 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 Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Mm-hmm. Not the singing voice. That was Danny Elfman. Himself, the man, the legend, the elf I'm man always, himself, the elf man himself. <laughs> I guess it wasn't later in life until I really looked at what Danny Element Elfman looked like. Oh my god! Oh, at least cool. recently, it's a, right? It's a surprise, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. Yeah, I, yeah. I want if you don't, if you've never done it, do it and be happy we about it. There's, there's it a really good performance of him. Like, present day, he's like. And I mean this in the best way possible. He's kind of like if Alfred E. Newman was a musician. Like, he gives me Alfred E. Newman vibes, but, like, super redhead and oh. just eccentric as all hell. Yeah. Okay. Tats. Eccentric as all hell. I'll take that. He in. just had a raffle to win his hand. As in, like, he molded his hand with all of his tribal tattoos, and, like, that's what he's selling as a kit. 
I just I, I forget what I was expecting because all I see this is this now, but I was not expecting what I saw. Go check it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Love, it's a yes. good look. I love it. Danny Elfman, amazing. Thumbs up over here from Channel the Pod. Gorometer. Let's jump into that real quick. It's time for the Goron. Fatality. On a scale of one to ten, Psycho to the Sadness, how gory is this one here? Consistency and intensity, one to five? Shit's I mean, weak. It, it is real, yeah, real, it, real. Yeah. I mean... No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I had it at like a... I think if I'm adding it up, I think it was like a two and a 2.5. So I think it was like at right at about a four to a 4.5. Because like there are it's a few scenes that get kind of intense, but, but sure. it's very, it's very thinly spread out. I mean, yeah, I, I'd be at like a two five, I'd say that's a little higher. I think like I'd a probably put it around a two five to one three. five for intensity, which maybe seems generous and a one for frequency. Because there is like very, very little. Because yeah. even like through the I, first couple deaths, there's no gore to speak of. Um, no, there's blood, and then like in one of the kills, there's not that much blood. Then we come back to it, and there's a lot more just blood. I guess I, I guess I but added like, a point or two because of puppet goo. Like that's the, that's yeah. what I'm not giving film. my like, main point some, for because it's like a humanoid puppet goo. I guess I yeah, guess I've never thought of that. puppet goo as gore, so I didn't right. really. Yeah, damn. But there, no. But there's one death in particular that does get pretty intense. Yeah, towards the end of the movie, the electric. Oh sure, one. but I'd still but like. I'd say a three at most. That's what I yeah. give, give it. Yeah, yeah. Sergio, Cody, I agree? disagree. I mean, I think a one out of five for each segment. So that's just two out of ten. Three. Yeah, three. three. I don't know how to count. Yeah. <laughs> two out of ten. Two, out, two and a half. Yeah. One out of five, not a one point five. I know what you're saying now. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'll slide mine down to like a three five. I you still can, think some of them are a little. You don't have to oh, let you, us sway you. Yeah, you you no, stick to your guns. How, yeah. But this is how we work these numbers out. We kind of go through the group. I'm like, well, now, yeah, sure. Maybe now you count. suddenly see. You can see the light. Because <laughs> there's only suddenly, one suddenly that I can more. think of that's actually a little like where you Ew. see stuff. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Cool. That's the gore. Now we're going to find out. Who is the horror for? Kind of works. This question is going to ask, you know, kind of subgenre, how, how you should watch it. Is it for beginners? Um, I mean, slasher. See. That's, that's what we got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Supernatural. Supernatural <laughs> slasher. Yes. Uh, I do. Uh, I, will, I, kind of yeah, I will say that. Yeah. I want to say it's a little, a little bit of a crime drama, a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 Definitely. Sort of crime thriller. Crime and drama. Then. Crime thriller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, oh, family oh, drama. <laughs> oh, yeah. The uh, dynamic. Sure. I don't know. But it, Ross, uh, I'm sure it was going to come up at some point. But he had texted me being like, was it different watching this time as a dad? And more than like any other movie I've watched, this was different. Absolutely. Um, like, I think there's, I have two actually, I mean, I, there's two ratings. Like I had a ratings thing before watching this as a parent and now a different one being ooh, a parent. That's interesting. Having it through. But yeah, it's, I don't know. I, I I agree with you, Sam. All right, so then I guess when, well, let's try, let's see if we can remember throughout you know points in the movie. How would you react as a parent to certain situations going on? I'm sure it'll kind of come up naturally, but I'm curious as being a non-parent. Sure. Well, I mean, yeah. it's uh, yeah. I think well, there's, there's a thing. It's I, less I, than well, child endangerment and more like I just feel so fucking bad for him, like in the whole yeah. situation. <laughs> well, I think it's. Um, <laughs> I think specifically for me, I think it's the parts of Andy trying to explain himself as a six-year-old and having children like my kid is four and having the same kind of explanations and as a parent there's part of you that's like okay just you, this or my kid's gonna run through this dialogue and then i just like okay sweetie now this this or like the like saying an inanimate object did something i'm like okay no i get it but like could we stop fooling around now like i need you to be like there were so many notes that hit it as a real parrot doing this where i was like oh my god if i was in this woman's shoes i have i almost like i have more sympathy for the mom now than i ever did <laughs> before watching this well Absolutely. we're we're not we're not parents but we i did ask cody this when we were watching it like i was like if 
we had a kid. Would you believe him? And would you, I, yeah, you know, would you? I don't. I don't think I would. Honestly, I don't <laughs> no, think no, we would. No. Why would you? We wouldn't. And also, <laughs> also, like you know, you'd be worried. You'd be worried about his like. You're like, oh fuck! Like my son is yeah losing his mind. Yeah. I have like a six year old with this severe. Like, what the fuck am I gonna mm-hmm. do? Like, but you, yes. This is where horrible. like the drama That's part the of true it. That horror. <laughs> <laughs> that's where like the drama part of it i think i wanted to include was like it's a little bit of a drama or like a soap Absolutely. opera a little bit yeah um because a, there's a lot of how... elements that get real um if you really think about it like yeah you know we're dealing with chucky here but this first one especially dealt with a lot of that oh yeah uh, mm-hmm. i think it's i think it's a weird one because it's like it reminded me a little bit of the novel the exorcist as in like <sighs> It's there. I mean, we're dealing nerd. with possession. <laughs> nerd. You read the novel uh, we're dealing first. With possess- <laughs> uh, no, but like, I guess in the novel more particularly, um, like you don't really know if Reagan is possessed or not possessed. And I think in the child's play, obviously, like we kind of get a little behind the curtain. But for most of the actors and players in this, like you, it's all pointing that Andy is like psychologically broken or like they mm-hmm. think he's crazy when yeah, he's not he's crazy. doing like, stuff and blaming it on the doll mm-hmm. blaming it on the doll and it's like this weird like well is he blaming it on the doll or is like is the doll really possessed like that's how every, like until literally things happen in the movie where you see chucky moving it's like it's not there's like, one moment i found know, particularly most- heartbreaking but i'll wait till we i think i know yeah, what you're talking about we're talking about the who's the horror for right now <laughs> <laughs> but, but, oh we went real deep correct correct yes well and and just to bring it back to the who is the horror for i do think that this is a like beginner friendly horror movie generally because I, the, the gore isn't that bad but it still has like the horror themes but dolls if you're are like dolls a, you're well, done for i well, think but dolls are like a common Ooh, fear yeah. like well that's why you go into horror movies sometimes too afraid i mean, of no you're dolls. gonna go into for the <laughs> They have a of, right? Chucky doll with them right now. Oh yeah, we have we, they, sitting, sitting on Sergio's lap. On Sergio's yep. lap. Nope. <laughs> That's our child being cute. Yeah. <laughs> and I think what's I think what's really cool about the Chucky character is that in a lot of um, doll or puppet movies, they I mean, like Chucky looks off putting, but not in the realm of other puppets or other dolls like if it's a haunted doll it's like cracked porcelain and like an eye exposed yeah. and some other crazy this shit. is like, like this the is doll a... that everybody wants <laughs> ever right yes. at least like, in this the, literally in looks this like movie the shit sure. that's in toys r us yeah. yeah yeah it's based on a real doll brian has one in his but sitting behind See, him now, right now that doll is creepy as fuck though i'm scared of that doll well, well, that's because it's well, that's because it's moving behind you. Oh my <laughs> I mean, I I've always said like with with the Annabelle thing in particular, I think that sh- that those movies would be scarier if they kept the original source material and just had it be a Raggedy Ann doll. But they probably get yes. sued. So something, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I agree with all that for beginners as well. And how to watch it, I think is I don't know. Ladder shock. Watch it alone. Or in either the dark. Or watch it alone. I mean, I think it's going to depend on your age, mm-hmm. but I i mean, really, this is a great, again, a great sleepover movie. This is a great movie where everybody's like, get together, you have your pizza, your parents yeah. are like, all right, well, go ahead and watch your, <laughs> watch movie. your movie. Yeah. And- no, that's a really good point. I don't think it's necessarily a party movie. I mean, it could be, but it's kind of like a watch with yourself or like with close friends kind of like yeah i i kind of agree with that i don't think it's like a like yeah let's fucking put this on and just track like i feel like there's a lot of like serious moments and dialogue in between because if you really think it's kind of a slow burn you kind of really have to pay attention as to what's going on Mm -hmm. so that's very true i think i think if we were gonna choose a party one i'll choose probably one of the rest of the ones in the franchise but this one is i think good because some of it is pretty creepy it's not like super scary but I think watching it by yourself in like a dark room might, you know, you might creep yourself out a little bit. I remember some of the moments from what, the first time I watched it, like as creeping me out, you know, when I yeah. whenever that was when I was a kid. Certain nice. scene. Creeped out Sam. <laughs> Sam was a little boy back then. Not, that did not... get scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> scared. yeah. All right. Open up the window because we got the treadable, treadable harbinger <laughs> of doom flying, <laughs> flying in. <laughs> To give any warnings, uh, <laughs> dads, do you have any warnings in particular? 
No. Oh, man. No, I mean, like, I, there is child endangerment, but, like, okay. it's a little less than most other ones that we've actually covered. Yeah, again, it's, like, not, it's not the threat to Andy that bothers me so much in it so much as, you know, it's just so heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i don't think there's any big uh warnings on this one yeah no i mean like there's some hints of like mental hospital stuff but it's very i guess if you don't um, like dolls <laughs> yes dolls are mental yeah. hospitals <laughs> cool all right buckle up buckaroos because you know we're heading straight into the spoiler zone we're here spoiler zone it did it right <laughs> yeah it did it it did it Something broke. You didn't hear it? <gasps> oh, no. <gasps> no, no. It just my volume went down. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're here into this area of places where we spoil things and talk about the movie and such. Chucky did it. Chucky did it. <laughs> <laughs> As the tagline says. <laughs> That's the tagline. Spoilers. All right. IMD behind the scenes there was quite a bit for this one i whittled it down but it's still pretty wordy at some points here but chucky's full name charles lee ray is derived from the names of notorious killers like charles manson lee harvey oswald and james earl ray i mean charles lee ray sounds like very much a perfect serial killer yeah. i think so too yeah, yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah. Did a, did a good one. Nailed it. Because you could have gotten real, like, corny. Like, you could have gone Marilyn Manson style, kind of just, you know. But that one actually sounds like if you glaze over, you're like, oh, no, that sounds like a guy who probably did something real horrendous. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Despite their long-running collaborative effort to bring Chucky to life, voice actor Brad Dorif and special effects wizard Kevin Yeager... Never met in person until they were both guests at a horror convention in May 2018. What? what? Wow. According to IMDb. Again, this right. is the, the Wikipedia, <laughs> so Wikipedia of, of movie trivia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty interesting, though. I mean, like, I guess, realistically, you wouldn't necessarily have to meet yeah. up mm-hmm. because, he, like, he's going to be just... Well, so that, like some sort of, of party time. release party, though, you'd think they might have met. Oh, that's true. Somewhere <laughs> yeah. along along the lines. Um this is one of those other films that have been accused of uh, inspiring violence in children. One case was linked to a series of gang, uh, a gang like killing or something, kidnapping, murdering of a 16 year old. Oh, okay. Girl so then I guess there Manchester. is a warning to this movie might cause some murders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you get might, cause murder. might cause murder. <laughs> well, I guess if you're a Midwestern mother, you would think <laughs> this might cause murders. Mm, yeah. But mothers are trying to movies. link it to the singer. Yeah, Ma'am. at least don't make um, psychos. So yeah, exactly. Psychos, it's right. fallen into that that realm. It's 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 been pinged with one of those things. Uh, original writer Don Mancini stated in an interview that in his original script they toyed with uh, the audience a bit longer, making them wonder if Andy was the killer rather than showing Chucky mm. or actually confirming mm-hmm. it was Chucky. That makes sense because yeah. we get the toying with that for the first kill for sure, mm-hmm. and then we quickly find out, you know. It actually is true, not. but yeah. It, that would have been a very different beat of a movie if, like, most of the movie, you're actually not 100% sure if it's Chucky or Andy doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it not changes pretty, yeah. the emotional connection to it entirely. Yeah. Because, like, when you watch it knowing this poor kid is, like, of course nobody believes Just him. Just being but terrorized. Like, yeah, yeah. Watching it that way makes it so much more... Uh, emotional Brutal. yeah then if it was just like well is he or isn't he like what's going on here hmm let me put on my thinking cap <laughs> put on my chunky thinking cap watch it with your heart not your head you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> well, that's real that's deep that's a that's some 2024 oh, knowledge shit. right there don mancini explained that chucky draws heavily from the my buddy dolls what? stated in my original script he was originally called buddy and we couldn't use it because of the my buddy doll the director went out and got a My Buddy doll, a Raggedy Ann, a Raggedy Andy, and one of those life-size baby infants. What I told designer Kevin Yeager was, I wanted something similar to a My Buddy doll. I described Buddy in my original script, now Chucky, as wearing red button overalls, red sneakers, striped sweater, with red hair, blue eyes, and freckles. Kevin went off and sketched many designs of Chucky until the final was picked. Yeager then built the first doll from those sketches in my details. And then, subsequently, the My Buddy doll line has never recovered from oh, the first no. child play movie. I was going to say, this wow. movie must have destroyed the toy, Damn. and that's why I didn't know about it, really. It Dude, was, I yeah. wonder if... 
Did they go after the movie legally or like the film? I'm sure I mean, they I tried. I don't have the details of that. I'm sure. It put them out of business. I bet they tried. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As well. Could you imagine just having a business that like, a, like I don't know, like if like Beanie Babies and then having a movie about a bunch of like K- insane killer baby beanies. <laughs> 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 yes. I mean, kudos just, to Kevin Yeager for creating the doll and how yes. it looks like because it's amazing stuff like that always fucking interests me i just want to be in the room when he's like sketching it and like turning it into what do we yeah. know now because it's such now embedded into popular culture because i'm sure before we met you never saw the chucky movies but you knew of chucky oh yeah oh yeah and you would have recognized chucky yeah yeah mm-hmm. icon cross culture damn crazy good job kevin <laughs> good, good job, job. good <laughs> job all Good right. job. The original <laughs> work print of the movie was more than two hours long. Uh, and other sources claim what? that the original cut was two and a half. Too long. Or near oh three hours God. long. Two, three. Some Boy. of the scenes that were deleted or cut down include original opening in which Mike is dressed in women's, clo- women's clothing in order to catch Charles Lee Ray. If you watch the normal <laughs> opening scene closely, you can see that he throws a dress on the ground as he chases Ray down the street. <laughs> now, I read this trivia before I watched the movie, and you totally see it. Like, right as the scene opens, what? Charles Lee Ray is running down the the fucking alleyway and the detectives chasing him he's throwing like a dress to the side oh my god (laughs) so there's this whole like stakeout like i don't know dressing up like trying to catch him scene before that that they they cut there's a whole andy showing his chuckiest room andy falling into a ditch in front of eddie caputo's hideout as it explodes after that whole scene there's like more with andy there chucky's oh yeah uh, there's a scene with the john slash dr death the voodoo guy performing dressed up and performing a whole ritual in his clothes and wow okay uh andy befriending a young girl during his time in the mental hospital oh the one that that they talk to the cops like i don't know she might know but they really don't expand upon (laughs) what that means it's that little girl there yeah so there's like a Apparently a whole bunch there. Uh, more footage of Chucky stalking Andy at the mental Andy at the mental hospital. Because this movie's well. a tight run, right? It's like eighty-seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I it's couldn't six, imagine six. it being two hours. I think it's no. perfect, like as is. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I will say, I could have used that extra scene of Andy jumping into the ditch because, like, how it's edited There's now. Something right? Yeah. He was close to the house, right? And then it's just, I guess, he was nearby. And I'm like, oh, Andy's dead. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's a very, it's oh. a very Mac and Me moment where you're just it's like, over. this is in the collab. Okay, no, and he's. He's dead. Okay. Goodbye. Nope, he's dead. <laughs> okay, fine. Despite his reputation as a hater of all things horror, Roger Ebert gave a positive review to this film. What? Uh, fuck you. One of his things that he stated on this is, uh, and he dives into more, but Child's Play is a cheerfully energetic horror film. Cheerfully? Of the slam bang school, but slicker and more clever than most. Wow. And then he goes on, but yeah. I mean, he he's like Child's Play. That was That's fine hilarious. for him. I feel like he felt like he needed to give her a good review, but then he just uses a bunch of hot words and then pressed them in a panini, like as a panini sandwich, and then that's that what like that a backhanded was like. compliment. Sleep. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I thought it was going to be trash, but yeah, I guess it's kind of clever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they really polished this turd. You're like wait, what? <laughs> and I mean that's it for the the good trivia up front. Other stuff might pop in. Who knows? Maybe maybe oh, not. Sure. We also have. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Oh, Chucky oh, Tumblr? They got a Chucky Tumblr. Chucky a Tumblr? Chum- a Tumblr? A Tumblr? A Tumblr? A Tumblr? Wait a minute. It gets that knocked down, down I, but it gets that up That should again. be the, the Tell the Pod Tumblr. The Tumblr. Tumblr. Yeah, that sounds, yeah. Uh, that sounds yeah. right. Thank you for that. Exclusive merch. All right. Before Ooh. we get into it, we picked this one because we needed a, a franchise to move on to, and Chucky came out on top. I don't have... I mean, I remember this being... Re- throughout my life as being a movie that's been around and having seen for a very long time but it's been a long time since i've really revisited child's play same very even realistically a lot of the chucky stuff since i first dove into them but but this one in particular so that's where Mm -hmm. i'm at have you seen it's a franchise yes i have not i have not seen the third one or cult no yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I might not have seen Cult. I'll probably know when we see it, but 
Mm-hmm. I haven't seen Call It War Curse. I haven't seen... I think it's... No, three? I don't know. I think I've seen two. I'm pretty sure I've seen two. And then I haven't seen three, but I've seen everything past that. Yeah, it's weird. To me, Chuck... I mean, this is going to be... Uh, I have to reevaluate this entire franchise at this point, uh, starting from this. But back in the day, this was kind of like bottom of the barrel franchise for me. Like, I would much... Like, there's so many other franchises I would kind of dive into before the Child's Play mm-hmm. franchise. Um, and re-watching the first one... Mm, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I gotta, mm. I, I gotta go back so in my fu- Rolodex and start going through these movies again. It's so funny because, in in my personal opinion, I feel like the Child's Play franchise. I think it's probably the more consistent one. Mm-hmm. As a watch, when you go from beginning to even like the the TV series that they have out, oh, I yeah. think it's the most consistent one to, in, in comparison to the other horror franchises. Uh, oh, I can totally there. see that. Yeah, and uh, but that's just that's just that's just me. But it is just you. Obviously, I I, I love Chucky. I'm kind of biased. It's all right. No, <laughs> we'll continue that that that. How how how's your history with Chucky? I mean, he's Mine? sitting in your lap. Yeah, yours. I uh, I was five years old when I first popped Chucky it's... into the TV. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, listen, I I've watched it since I was little. I I mean I begged my parents to make me go see Bride of Chucky in theaters nice. and we missed the showtime and oh. me and my parents we stayed up until 10 p.m. that night um so we could watch we had to go to like a different town to watch <laughs> it um and they did that yeah nice parents of the year for, yeah. for that just just Shout that out. year uh, no, <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I want to say Child's Play was probably one of the first movies that we watched because mm-hmm. Sergio like had a whole plan of like what movies and and in which order for beginners I was gonna watch yep. them to like that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> get me into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that this one was really early on because you love this entire series, and I mean, so do I. I I, I still haven't seen all of them, but um, I really enjoy them. Um, and of course, we were covering the Chucky TV series too for the mm-hmm. channel. Um, On the YouTube, and I check think that's it out. Why Make sure to check that out, listeners. Yeah, yeah, we have reactions for for the TV series. That, that's also why it's a little close to home for us mm-hmm. because the Chucky TV series was the first series that we did reactions to on the channel. Oh, like our first like big popular ones before we were like doing like a trailer reaction or maybe watching some horror shorts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that one was the one that really Took brought off. a lot of people brought in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. I guess to oversimplify it, do you like the Chucky TV series that is out now? We do. I, I we, do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, I think that... I think that everyone kind of generally agrees that the first season is the strongest yeah. and then uh, the second and, and especially the the third, which we're only halfway through at this point, um, were a little more niche. Uh, I think it's probably a good way to put it that like not it it's not going to appeal to as wide of an audience as uh, the first season mm, did. But yeah, there's, it's so good. Like you'll watch this. It's it, you don't even understand how it even gets to where the child's play series. I'm sure. Right? The Chucky series okay. is yeah. right now. <laughs> Beautiful. And with that, let's go ahead and fucking begin this shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The movie. <laughs> Here we are. It starts with that chase I kind of mentioned before, uh, which leads to a little shootout, a whole bunch of shooting out going on, ultimately mm-hmm. leading us into our Charles Lee Ray, which we'll soon find out, breaking into the toy store. To try to get away from said cop chasing after him. He Humper gets shot a few hot times. on his heels. Yeah, hot on his heels. He gets shot like once or twice at this point, a few times going on here. And he soon realizes realizes that he's dying, man. And like he's like that bleeding out. The whole and... fucking scene was really funny to me. Like he like does the like looks and he goes, mm-hmm. fucking dying. And then he's like <laughs> It's the best reaction to like realizing that you're dying is just getting that fucking pissed off. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I'm gonna go. 
angry. Yeah. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> Raging. I'm fucking, fucking dying. Swearing revenge upon people. Mm-hmm. It is really funny, too, when you catch what's like, because under his breath, he's like, I gotta find somebody. Mm-hmm. I rewatching it, you're like, oh, wow. So this guy immediately just knows he's going to switch bodies with someone. He just needs to figure out who he needs to switch bodies with. Well, I think um, I think it was and maybe I'm misreading the the discussion later on. But when they talk to the um, when they talk to the to the like voodoo priest guy later mm-hmm. on, it sounded like that was always his intention was specifically to go into a doll um because he at least what i took from from his conversation when chucky first goes to him is he was like you told me that i wouldn't like that this wouldn't be an issue I be able but i heard or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, th- I don't think it was specifically well maybe because they do have voodoo dolls but i don't think it was specifically a doll i think it would have just switching your bodies. soul in general you know, mm-hmm. just doing that act because I think what he meant. Um, I definitely understand because like some of the dialogue really does make you think that like it was an intent. But I think later on when he calls him an abomination <laughs> is that I think <laughs> okay. like I think he like haphazardly jumped into this doll. And then the yeah. priest is like, wow, this is really gross. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 Whoa. And I'm sure he sees some shit. So that must be bad. But yeah, I, I, I do think we need to take a second to talk about just the toys in this toy store because uh, there's, uh, I mean, having just shopped for Sergio's four year old nephew for Christmas, mm-hmm. the toys in this toy store are like, they seem so innocent. Like yes. it's all like Fisher Price type stuff mm. that it's like your play kitchen, your play gardening, your, oh, your, yeah. uh, you know, the, the official good guy machine gun. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah, the machine gun. gun. <laughs> Yeah, the soldier said. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. It it's, it's, it's it's a nice, a little more play nice than uh, <laughs> like an actual Toy Story would be. Yeah, yeah. This whole run through of the the place is fantastic, and this is where he is swearing revenge on the cop and his partner who left him to get caught. He zooms oh, out at some point. Oh, that speeds off in the van. Yeah. Exactly. Is, yeah, we see our good guy soldier sets. We see all like these kind of cutesy toys and all this kind of fun little place that we're in. So he's like searching around. He has to find that. And then he pretty much runs in and collapses into this pile of good guy, good guy dolls. Yeah. dolls and is like, all right, perfect. This will this work. <laughs> uh, and he starts saying a bunch of... I Dewey Dembela. And then thunder and lightning and explosions. That's, yeah. I, I was wait, wait, Serge. Do you know? Do you know it? Probably. Um, we're gonna actually perform it right now. Please do. Oh my god! Please do. I think it's just I Dewey Dembela. Give me the power. I beg of you. And then I I lose it there because it gets all French. A little repetitive. You know, yeah. yeah. Little... <laughs> oh sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so all that happens. If you know it, you know it. And lightning <laughs> and thunder, oh, like the Gozerian lightning that just goes right over the shoots toy down sword. and causes a fucking mm-hmm. our first explosion, explosion of the yeah. movie. Lightning explosion. Which is explosion didn't make any sense huge. to me. It's, yeah, <laughs> what what did the lightning strike that caused it to explode this much? Uh, the soul transfer. And how did the cops survive it at all? <laughs> <That's all terrible. laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Just get that kind like of explosion because that was a fucking fireball throughout the whole thing. Anyway, it blew the it cops all the fine. The cop's fine enough to, you know, like look through the rubble and see Charles Lee Ray there dead. Just like, dead. Eyes open. I also I also am actually like really mad at the cop in this specific scene because he he goes and he hunts Charles Lee Ray down. They go into the toy store. He like basically listens to the entire chant. So you have this guy doing some sort of ritualistic chant. He gets struck by lightning through the roof of this toy store when there was no bad weather outside. The entire place explodes. And then he's just like, well, yeah. he's dead. <laughs> Clearly, there's nothing else to like investigate. Yeah, there. Nothing happened. This guy's he's a so big incredulous skeptic. later when when there's like anything other than Charles Lee Ray just having died, despite the fact that he literally witnessed like a, a whole bunch of unexplainable ritual. events. Yeah, some weird ass <laughs> shit. Like even if you are a skeptic, that's some weird ass shit to be happening. Oh, in front of absolutely. Oh, he also doesn't he like fucking, loose ends, so he should be he like, "This me is, off. This is too loose. This end." 
way too loose. That was tidied up perfectly for him. <laughs> Anything <laughs> more than that would have been a headache of paperwork. <laughs> Yeah, this no. is like almost as bad as saying, well, I'm a control freak. I can't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Exactly. Guys, he was just trying to get with Karen. That's why he said oh, that. Oh, yes. And she took it literally. That's, the whole, that's the whole subplot. He's actually been stalking Karen for months. Oh, my God. Wow. He's like, this girl, how man. Do we, how do I meet this girl? Her. Let me give this doll to a bum. Oh, shit. <laughs> he orchestrated the he, whole thing. He was behind oh my the God. There, It's going to like, oh, that's how the series is going to go. It's going to be like these weird saw moments where there's like... Memories of stuff from like movies in the next movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Setting up. Yeah, yeah. All right. So this takes us to uh, the apartment uh, in our intro of Andy, who is watching some good guy cartoons, which he's oh. really upset about that he's seen that one. And his good guy PJs pouring oh, some good guy toast. cereal, <laughs> like burning the hell out of toast. I love the fucking giant scoop of margarine that just looks like. Oh. Oh. It looked like ice cream. And the sugar. Sure. Like ice cream. Exactly. Like this. The six scoops of sugar directly oh, on top of the fucking. I was fine with like two, maybe three scoops, but I was, I was that was a, a see, lot. but that cereal is not the cereal you put sugar on. Like no. I could see putting some sugar on like a bowl of Cheerios or something. But but listen, I gotta say it right Rice now. Yeah. They casted the cutest motherfucking kid to be Andy. He's oh great. My God. He is I was like, great. I want, I want you to be my child. Like this, Elvin, you're so adorable. I was <laughs> shocked because like, I guess he was born in, I think he's seven when he's filming this and he's supposed to be portrayed as six or something. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. But like, I was f not flabbergasted, but I was like, man, this kid is like really young. Like this is a really young yeah. kid to be mm -hmm. in a fucking crazy movie like this. Mm -hmm. And it plays and he goes through a lot of emotions totally. in this movie. Also, he he's, does he's a sweetheart. Really? Like, oh my God, he's making breakfast in bed for his mother yeah, at for first, his own birthday. Yeah. At first, because it's and been so he, long since I've seen it, I was like, oh, this kid's like... Home by himself, making his own breakfast. Look how wacky it is. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, he's bringing it in for his mom for his birthday. Like, what a sweet kid. Oh, that's funny. And then I he saw looks it back differently. at the box. What? He was, Brian what was, was like, like, look at this fucking, fucking moron. mess everywhere. Though. <laughs> I, know, I was like, I, I see it as like, oh, yeah, he's doing this sweet, nice thing. But it's to wake his mom up so that he can open his presents. Oh, he was excited. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> There's just to be nice, but, also, but it's like, but, but also, also as the parent, like you are also excited to like wake up so your kid can open their presents. Oh, Aww. sure. And we get that one glimpse where he like, well, he stops and watches the show a little bit, which is something I actually picked up on this time watch was that the good guys originally was a TV show that they, they then created into Good guy dolls. It but sounds like the dolls. doll was brand new too, or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh just my came god, out. that fucking commercial with that ginormous mascot guy with the good guy's head <laughs> is oh, fucking. It's, like, it's a fucking abomination. That's an abomination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that crashing through my front door with an axe, I would shit myself. Like that is that is. Yeah, horrifying. that's a real horror movie mascot. <laughs> it's the person in that commercial. But it is funny, though, because it's different than, like, I guess in the 80s they had to start doing this, is that they actually come out with the toys first, and then they have to come out with the cartoon. Oh, Because okay. if they come out with the cartoon, then they market it towards kids, then they sell the toys. I guess it's like a... That technically is illegal, or, like, the way... So they have what? to actually release the toys before Toy the television show because of some ordinance law that happened they did it with like he-man and a bunch of other ones too well I, yeah no, I watched they, a lot of they my made the shows that. to sell the toys the, oh no that, yeah, yeah yeah in the good guy in the good guy <laughs> but they couldn't ad, do the show they, first and then release the toys out because i guess under some law it was like that would be monopolizing like gearing specifically towards kids so they have to actually release oh, the toys first then the tv shows come out they can't do it the opposite way I don't know why. Oh, I watched a shit ton to, of though. stuff about I, I, I love the 80s. Yeah, but. you probably watched <laughs> yes. the toys that made us. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I love the little glimpse that he he does when he's like carrying everything, spilling everything all over the floor uh, and looks looks at the box that is fucking like child, like good guy doll size and wrapped exactly like it would be a good guy doll in there. <laughs> yeah, yes. Wrapped I in just, in good guy doll wrapping paper. paper. I don't blame this kid for being super disappointed whatsoever. Yeah, what the fuck? So he gets like he what, a sweater or some it's shit? It's one pair of jeans. It's a pair of jeans. 
in this <laughs> giant ass box. Like, come on. Karen's, Karen's the real villain here. She knew she, what she was doing. <laughs> she knew. <laughs> so ultimately, yeah, he's he runs in there, wakes her up, is being cute but she's like yeah it's 6 30 in the morning but we found out it's his birthday so yay he wants to go open his presents and he's excited for that big box opens that up and it's clothing so he's pretty disappointed which womp, womp. understandably you set that kid up for disappointment uh, big time <laughs> the, the giant box and, and fucking putting pants you in there what? oh my Not god these, would just, these are perfect for you these, you just needed these like calm down it's like, like no mom yeah just stop. just stop and look you got but this we big find box out, to play with <laughs> He can open this <laughs> little box here, which turns out to be like a good guy tool belt accessory kit thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. a hammer, a fake yeah. saw. Like, yeah. He was just like, I want a good guy doll to go with it. Of course you do. Of course. <laughs> exactly. Don't buy him the supplies. <laughs> you buy him all the, the accessories the, and not the doll. Yeah, Look, that's I got you a, a set of hats for your good guy doll. <laughs> <laughs> for the good guy that you don't have. <laughs> I guess is the good guy supposed to be also marketed as like... You could wear each other's clothes. <laughs> like you can wear like your seems like you it. Could share accessories with your good mm-hmm. guy and like yeah. hang out. But that, now <sighs> I say this right now, roasting Karen. But I do. I want to say because we're gonna get to it. I do respect her because she is a single mother, like trying to make it um, right for yeah. her child. Oh, big time and she's in retail and like when she said like i didn't know about it in time i totally believe her i'm like you know what i totally get it i have nothing against karen i think she's doing the best she can with what she's been dealt i mean she does go on to be like uh, a christian housewife or something like that in She's like the mother or... in Seventh Heaven, I think. Oh, yeah. oh she is. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think what's really interesting about Andy's character and Karen's character in particular is that, like, they're believable parents and believable kids. As in, like, I don't think, like, anything is... Yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah. the their deniability about the situation within, like, the real world is super acceptable. I think some... Sh- like you said, what Mike sees, the cop, throughout this entire thing is like, nah, that's normal. Like, my favorite part is where they go, we searched his apartment and we didn't find anything except uh, for the uh, fucking <laughs> 30-foot fucking mural of the yep. him yeah, naked with those, a bunch of murals <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's really like, weird <laughs> yeah but like mike's like nah but well, that's yeah, it's just art it's finger painting but you also like get the relationship between andy you get the relationship between andy because andy knows that his mom is doing her best because at that moment he kind of accepts that he didn't like, get okay. the good guy doll okay and then like later on he wasn't even expecting to get a good guy doll and he ends up getting <laughs> he it just thought there were so groceries <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> <laughs> the idea that this box that you're carrying like that yeah sure it's some groceries uh, but anyway Carrie uh, she's at work and this is when we get uh, her co-worker Maggie coming in and be like, there's this peddler in the alley selling a good guy doll and they can go get it for cheap let's go out Each. there you can leave your station come on we'll go we, what other opportunity are you going to get so she goes out there and we have this little haggling scene with this where she's weird like, D- the first dude. offer they gave is yeah. $10 $10 for that thing I was 100 like, bucks I mean, and then 50 bucks or whatever I think she 30. pays 30 bucks for it yeah. so mm-hmm. pretty great pretty, price I think I mean I imagine these things for at least going for 100 in retail Yes. See, but nowadays he would have to legally tell her this was next to a murder scene, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this right, was right, Facebook yeah. Marketplace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's what that was, That's what would make it even more expensive, I think. Right? Yes. Oh, it was well, like this yeah, was yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. 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 you can get more for it. All those but goddamn it does, weirdos. It, it breaks my heart again. I'm. <laughs> It breaks my heart because Karen Maggie's like, no, f- fuck, fuck this, fuck this. You don't don't accept that that offer. And she's like, no, you have no idea how much Andy wants this doll. I'm doing whatever it takes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, God. you're trying to be a really but, good mom. I mean, like she's yeah. a good mom to the fact that she's in the back alleys of Chicago, yelling at a dude with a shopping cart full of shit about a <laughs> dented to- Like I mean, like that level is like, all right, that, that's a good mom. Like that's mm-hmm. fucking nuts. And then it just. Well, it makes what happens in this movie so fucking tragic to oh, like experience. Yeah. Be like, of course, as if they already needed any more bad luck. All of this happens. They get I, fucking. Chucky. I always picture this ulterior one where she, Kara doesn't buy the doll, and then Chucky just is just walking around alleyways, scuttling around. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in the box, so like. 
What's he waiting for? What's he doing? <laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for, huh? <laughs> I, see, I always thought it was so nef- I mean, like, Charles E. Ray as a character, even in Chucky, is such a nefarious it's just a really evil character because he knows that like, fuck, I'm in this doll. I can't walk around in normal public. I'm going to need someone to carry me around and do shit. And mm-hmm. then he goes, I'm going to need, I mean, obviously it's by happenstance that he gets to Andy, but like, he's a doll. He's going to wind up probably with a kid. And he realizes like, fuck, I can't get around normally. I have to have like, I have to coerce a child into moving me around the city. I mean, I guess he seems more eccentric and it seems like he would be doing the stuff he does later in the film earlier on because he certainly doesn't care about going yeah. around the city, running around a fucking institute, right. yeah. sneaking around, I mean, doing he, any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember if we like learn this in this movie or not, but he it, the rule is that he has to reveal he he has to go into the first person he reveals himself to like be a possessed. But doll. he doesn't yes. know. Right? He doesn't know, know that doesn't until know that after he's so, already done that. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's when he cause... goes back to Doctor Death or whatever it is as mm-hmm. Chucky for the first time is when and does that little sweet torture scene. That's when mm-hmm. he finds yeah. out that he needs to. But at that point, he was just like, had already told Andy for the hell of it. I don't know. Why not? Why not just jump into like the the guy who found him in the store? He had a body right there. Could have just done it. I think he thinks yeah, at this it? point this body is still uh, indestructible Invincible. or he can't feel pain. Or maybe maybe, oh, maybe yeah. he was shot uh, by. Uh, yeah. That makes Chris, sense. Mark it's Ruffalo right. yet. Yeah, by, by, by Andy Spark <laughs> Ruffalo. Yeah, it is kind of interesting too, because like as Chucky progresses throughout the movie, he's looking more and more like he's looking more humanoid as he's like when he gets you know he gets wounded, he starts like the more he's in the vessel, the more he's turning like human. I always thought of it like a baby fawn type thing, where like he's in this thing, but he's still trying to grasp the idea of like getting around as the doll. But the more he is the doll, the more he's more in control of like his actions and able to like manipulate his host better, I guess. Well, that's funny. Cause I was wondering like, what is his control of the doll and how much does he know? Cause I felt like he, he understands being a doll pretty quickly, very well. Imagine if you yeah. were just a toy all of a sudden and had to be a toy all the time. How yeah. easy or hard is that to do to not move? Cause Total- there's long periods of times where uh, he, he doesn't move right. it. And, and-, and what does it take to mimic that voice? without batteries or what what, what, what. <laughs> and how do you oh, get yeah. your art points of articulation for things that aren't articulated articulated like his hands <laughs> clearly don't move his fingers don't move but he can move like the toys don't but he can when he's the toy yeah well i i, I guess i feel like his i've always thought of his hand fingers i don't know you could confirm or like rubbery or something like that for so for whatever reason yes. when he is in there and can control like because it's rubbery you can move it but if it was plasticky i would for some reason Not. like a hard plastic mm-hmm. i sure. would it'll be a little bit more based on like the the gi joe points of articulation of being able to move those we'll come back to articulation points and all that in a little bit uh moving on from here she gets the 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 chucky doll we get back inside and gets reprimanded by her boss who's waiting for her who ultimately tells her that you know uh another co-worker called out sick you have to cover tonight it has to be you it's her son's birthday no. i'm going home i need to go home no <laughs> go you, home. you get two hours you can leave at five but you got to be back by seven so maggie's like i'll watch him tonight it'll be fine do we'll take care of it so this is when we get home she's carrying this fucking like good guy doll size box that's covered in like <laughs> brown paper grocery bags yes. and then it's just like this isn't groceries <laughs> oh shit what, what? No, wait, Mom. <laughs> and all excited it's a good guy doll for andy so he takes it out shows his mom how it works it's like hi i'm andy to which the doll replies hi i'm chucky and i'm your friend to the end heidi ho Mm. <laughs> we get the start of the creepiness and just the there's something the off-putting mm-hmm. maggie arrives uh so i guess you know a little bit of time has passed and he's off playing with chucky in the tool set just having fun and then <laughs> the news comes on and chucky gets distracted <laughs> by it and then Andy gets a little upset. Look at yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah Andy is upset <laughs> <laughs> she's watching me like fucking i don't know build something oh my god uh, and, and then it, 
him saying, Chucky wants to watch the nine o'clock news. And then just like Maddie's face, she's like, what? I feel like like that's a weird lie type of thing a kid would say, right? But very typical. It it seems that way, right? Like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. uh Uh-huh. Well, doesn't seem too out of the ordinary, you know? yeah, Yeah, yeah. Oh, like something like that. Like the second my daughter needs, like it's bedtime. She's like, yeah, but like, what if he wants to watch five more minutes? And she's like pointing to toys or things like that, where it's like, no, no, like he'll, the toys will be fine. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's something. Though I do have to imagine how, like knowing Charles temper that he has yes. in this movie mm-hmm. i can only imagine how fucking annoyed he is as a doll just looking at this kid and it's like i'm gonna fucking watch this news bulletin right now all right don't so, order me around child i yeah. guess it has been long enough i'm wondering at what point does because we do learn later on that chucky has told andy that he will kill him if he tells anyone about this oh yeah and, oh, and, I, and at this point to when Andy reveals that he hasn't been like terribly alarmed seemingly by Chucky. Yeah. So when did Chucky and how did Chucky present that? Like that? I uh, think it was we, during we, heard the... all, we didn't get it was through one of the intimate whispers. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. it's after the I honestly think it's after Maggie's death because like he starts talking about how like then he dispels like his real name and all this other information mm-hmm. about Especially- it. Especially I think I'll especially when he entices him to go skip school. I mean, he at that moment, he must have told, like, I'll kill your mom. And I'll kill you if you don't take me to this train station and we go over to this place. It has to be around that moment. Well, you just got to think about I, I, I'm curious, as you know, like kind of like you said, with his temper and how Charles Lee Ray is of how he's interacting with this kid, because it is just very much this like gaslighting of this kid to... well, he gets on gets oh. off on manipulation as well yeah huge exactly oh, yeah, so he has to be playing like it because you ultimately when we get him burned at the end he, he plays hard into yeah well i mean these emotions only, the only reason why devilish uh chucky comes back <laughs> is after he realizes he has to inhabit andy's body i mean for the most part mm. he left this kid framed for a murder in an insane asylum. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was just going to be like deuces. And like, well, that was would have been good. Just leave. Yeah. yeah. You know and what I mean? True. It wasn't until like he realizes that he needs Andy that he actually goes back for him. Like, it's such a weird, like, also super fucked up, like framing a six year old for murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, you, whatever. You, you, you get a glimpse of the conversations they have also, because later on, Andy tells Chucky, like, you were right. They didn't believe me. So I'm only assuming he's like, they'll never believe you, kid. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Smoking a stogie. (laughs) So after all this little nine o'clock news nonsense, it's time to go to bed. Um, And I like how Maggie just grabs Chucky by the hand and bangs him around everything as she's walking down the hallway. Fully dislocates his shoulder. Oh, he's pissed. I cannot imagine that that felt great. And, like, the fact, too, is, like... That's a little disrespectful to this child's toy, right? Yeah, like you wouldn't just, I wouldn't like yeah. just pick it up and just bang this thing around that this kid just got and likes. I don't know. I thought it was funny. So what you're saying is that Maggie got what she deserved. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it starts. I, I, I mean, that's the question. Like here, does you know? Do you think she's sur- no, she survived? Was it Maggie a bitch that got what she deserves? <laughs> <laughs> because she just carelessly dislocated his shoulder and banged him around. But so so that all happens. She brings Chucky. Then um, Andy goes and starts brushing his teeth and everything. And then Maggie's back in the kitchen. The TV pops on. Got to get to that nine o'clock news. And Chucky's just sitting there watching it. We'll get a little jump scare, which was oh, fun. Yeah. Like that. The that whole, jump scare was pretty good. It was it really got me. Well, that good. would scare the shit out of me. Well, yeah, especially <laughs> in real life, for sure. And the whole reason why Chucky Don't wants to do watch it, the Sergio. News. Don't do it. <laughs> is oh, that, he, Sergio, Sergio uh, already is well aware tonight. that if if these dolls start moving on their own, I will know exactly who is doing it, and they will disappear. <laughs> well, I definitely, for w- at least one of our children that we'll have in the future, mm-hmm. I'm going to give them $5 to tell Cody, uh, there's someone in the closet. Can you check? Oh, Ooh. boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's You're going to give him one. one of the 
And when he's the when they're the right height, you can give him one of the Chucky masks and have him run around <laughs> like in this movie. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I promise I'll be good. Sorry be for good. all these <laughs> terrible ideas. We're going to knock it off. No, oh, this is sorry. bad, Sergio. Don't do this. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> and uh, the whole reason why Chucky wants to watch the news is that he hears that the his accomplice had escaped, uh, was a county jail in transit and is now on the run or something like that. <laughs> yes, and that's uh, he obviously swore to kill him and Detective Norris. So he's got he's perked up. Ready to do something. Got a hard on for, All right. for this. Like, exactly. <laughs> now it's bedtime for real. Um, it's bedtime. And he's all like, I to- Andy's like, I told you she'd be mad at you if you watch the news. And then Maggie's chilling, reading, getting cold. Andy's door opens and we get, we'll call it child cam for now because we still don't yes. know for it's a not fact like, that. It's mm-hmm. not like blade cam. Because there's no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I forget what movie we mentioned it. It was an Argento uh, Giallo or something of like of the POV of the like, cam. Crawling it was opera. Up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about this level of going through and running around. Oh my God. And we see a little figure run by at one point, which is really funny looking. But great. It works. Uh, <laughs> suspicious things are afoot. We get more creeping around, getting spooked. And then this is when Maggie comes back into the kitchen and sees like flour strewn it's, about, spilled yeah, everywhere. on the floor, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and on the counter for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nefarious purposes. <laughs> exactly. So she's like, I think in the process of cleaning that up and then here's something else or like for some reason goes behind like another vase potted plant thing yes to pick up and see what's behind there nothing but then that's when she turns around and gets knocked in the head by a little toy hammer whacked thing, in the head with a hammer which fucking sends her stumbling and a fumbling backwards and straight out stumbling the, uh, and a fumbling that window <laughs> stumbling and this a fumbling this is a whoa I love whoa, this shit whoa, whoa. <laughs> She slides on a roller skate and then onto a banana peel. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a uh, like a rolling pin back there as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I really like the shot of her falling out of or falling well, outside. I, I thought once about it. Watch her falling. I mm-hmm. think it's. Cool. I was, it was like, good. oh, they definitely had a stunt person like oh, was- actually fall. Yes, like absolutely. this looks so real. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is definitely. It was great. And so so she. F- falls out it's like six or seven floors so yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a top of a car. it's a fall <laughs> on a are they car. at the top floor oh almost at the top if they weren't a, yeah it was top or, or second to the top i was for some reason i was expecting the car to explode <laughs> the, way this, the way the action the, goes on in this movie in this movie most things explode so like that's awesome. not really the action out of is very, it's very 80s action yes in this movie anything late 80s uh-huh. through the 90s cars mm-hmm. typically explode if something happens to them so it's not that crazy <laughs> she lands right. on the car the car explodes projectile shooting her Back through back the into window. the apartment <laughs> uh, into her and sets apartment. the apartment yeah. on fire. Yeah, <laughs> no. Then we get a, a cut to Karen getting off the bus and then seeing this whole commotion of emergency <gasps> personnel running around the building, which she's so able she, to run through, run through the police tape, run through everywhere, go go up that go <laughs> wherever, but not until she's trying to get in her apartment. Is somebody like, "Hey, what Whoa. do you think you're doing?" What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> But she's able to be like, this is my place, and goes goes in there. I like when she goes in, like, past the living room, and there's the cops just, like, Staring chilling out. at her. Yeah, and she's clearly <laughs> starting to freak birthday. out, searching for her son, and all the cops are just like, what's her deal? <laughs> Another hysterical <laughs> woman. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> so she's, yes, yeah, she's running around searching for Andy, finds him in his room with Detective Mike Norris. So this is our detective from the beginning of the movie how mm. serendipitous that he has shown up where right chris Chucky sarandon is. who apparently mark ruffalo is one chris sarandon ass looking motherfucker after i saw it <laughs> yes. i couldn't unsee it it started messing with my head i couldn't tell what actor i was God. watching at one point really that's interesting i need off. to go back and look because i did not get the ruffalo but i didn't know to look for the ruffalo oh wait hold on did you watch the ruffalo cut of this movie or 
Oh, I don't think I watched the Ruffalo cut. Oh, I think we okay. did. We went looking for the Ruffalo. Oh, and oh, I think we so found then, it. I think we it's, found it. It's like one of those things too. As soon as you see it, you'll never unsee it. So yeah. Um, yes. Now, now I'm now I'm cursed with the knowledge, so I know I'm mm-hmm. going to see it. Absolutely. Exactly. It's like you all just losing the game. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Not cool. What? <laughs> so <laughs> for all my Ruffalo and the podcast, soldiers, we're going home. <laughs> 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 he explains kind of he he pulls uh karen aside explains what happened maggie's dead they go into the kitchen and then this is where we get a little footprint talk because we see these little yes. tiny footprints on the counter in the flower he's a dick man the oh, way he's that a total he goes dick about, about this, this situation he's like, like yeah like the way he says it he was like i don't know i mean why would andy be up on the counter, right? <laughs> Besides, I already checked all Where the shoes in his closets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But not the shoes he's vetting. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't. I know laws change, and and as you go back in time, we're not as kind to children as they were now. But like, what is the having to like speak with a kid? Him? Yeah, question yeah. a child so, without their parent and stuff. I specifically got called out on this by someone in, uh, in a on Chucky YouTube video, actually, because oh, because I it was in one of the one of the earlier Chucky seasons where I was like, they can't just talk to that child without a parental. <laughs> and Wait, it turns are you imitating out, yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that um that it actually in in a lot of places you totally can yeah and well, what are you, you know, yeah. Chicago in the late 80s totally believe that they can just like talk to the kid interrogate a child the parent there's president. a lot of terrible pr- yeah. parents out there that you want to be able to talk to the kid without the parent around as well yeah, yeah. well I don't know I guess like whether or not anything's admissible or whatever but it just seems like totally I think Mike is uh, he, he's under the impression that Andy did this and I think that's where, like, that is Why definitely his be? angle the <sighs> entire time. I mean, absolutely. I mean, he's already stolen the hammer and put it into his jacket. <laughs> like, he's mm-hmm. just kind of going through the motions of what? talking to the mom about it, where it's like, I feel like he's almost like toying with Karen. The other thing about of just this being scene level. is she's like, you know what? You know, we've been through a lot of stress. I think you need to get out of here. He's like, you know what? You're right. All right, everybody pack <laughs> it up. Let's get out of here. Like, <laughs> police work <laughs> over. Oh, my God. Yeah, just, yeah, why not get out? So the cops are trying to leave and all that. And then this is when Andy then goes to bed and oh, sees, sees flower on the bottom of Chucky's shoes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then he runs out and tries to tell everyone. He's like, I know who did it. He's like, it's Chucky. So I guess Chucky hasn't said, I'm going to kill you yet. It's probably after this. You're right. Like a little bit after, after this, this, where if you try that again, I'm going to fucking, fucking slit your throat, you. kid. But you know, he said it like that. You know, it, he yeah, was yeah. tough. But like, <laughs> if, if only the detective had just like, I don't know, investigated the apartment and looked at any the other doll? shoes, like any other yeah. shoes. <laughs> Oh, well, I have this doll that wears the same type of shoes as me. I mean, it sounds crazy, but maybe you could look at the shoes. But a six-year-old obviously can't really articulate that and is just going to say, Chucky did it. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he just, he happens to have the same type of doll that the guy that you just killed and watched do a voodoo ritual died next to you a couple of days ago. Uh, that's watched not suspicious die in at a all. pile of these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I think that's what, you're right, he's like on a literally like a pile of dead good guy dolls and he's like, check this guy out. Um, I think that's also kind of like the, what's really painful in kind of a good way, obviously, because it's a horror movie about Andy, is that like he's only six years old, so he's co- only minimally comprehending what is going on. You know what I mean? Whereas like his doll's talking to him, and like that's not necessarily out of the realm of shit. Where it's like, oh, he's watching cartoons where like shit's talking to him, and like he doesn't quite realize how insane <laughs> that is. You know what I mean? Well, you're right. It's it's one of the like really tragic things about this movie because he's he's young enough that it's like you it's really believable that he would legitimately think all he has to do is say, Oh, it was it was the doll, and that people would believe him. Yes, yes, absolutely. Right, and he, and he can't truth. articulate it enough because yeah. he's so young to be like, ah, it's the doll. And they're like, Yeah, sure, yeah, kid. But sure. I think it like I think he doesn't really take it as anything because I think he says it over and over again a few times or then at one point she he sees that karen is just in distress because he keeps saying that and she said i'll stop making up lies because you know he cares about his mom he doesn't want to get her to be stressed but i think at some point you see him slowly learning and realizing that this is he's kind of 
grasping how serious this issue is yes by the time where he's in the second time he's in, i think in the at the the police station yes and karen comes by and that's where he's like oh my god i need i need to do something i think oh yeah so then right after this uh this is when the cop you know has the hammers like run down to the lab as soon as possible i think i have a murder weapon they all kind of laugh because yeah. it's obviously a fucking little toy hammer thing oh yeah. my god his like a partner in this thing oh, it's yeah. just oh so my like God. yeah sure uh, wait are you being serious <laughs> yeah you can't believe it partner everything's wild karen well, then you goes, forgot, what's i forgot also that before he leaves he tells karen you're gonna call me right you're call me. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. she just yeah. she just lost Car her, her best is it best friend yeah lost her, yeah, lost yeah, her best, best friend, friend and it more than likely that her son just murdered someone and he's like all right you want to uh you want to give me a ring ding no no maybe not <laughs> yeah to okay, the point right. where yeah uh andy's calling her aunt maggie like they had a mm -hmm. pretty it's good serious. relationship it's it's serious yeah so then karen goes over to andy's room and he had like when he's just sitting there chucky sitting in the chair and they're just staring at each other and she asked uh what Chucky's been saying, and Andy says that Chucky told him his real name is Charles Lee Ray, and he was sent from heaven by Daddy to play with him, Andy. And now that's fucked up. That, that is fucked yeah, up that to that, use that is some fucked up shit. Charles that, Lee Ray fucked up shit right there. That is a, you know, yeah. <laughs> see, that's like that's I feel, I imagine him being like doing that thing. He's like, I'll fucking kill you, but. I was sent here by your daddy, so like oh, you know, I, I want to be here to play with you, but you can't tell anyone. Charles like, yeah. Lee Ray is a abuser. super fucked up character, like a super mm -hmm. fucked up character. Mm -hmm. It's such a, I mean, it's a great juxtaposition because obviously you have like the Chucky doll, which is this like just kid doll, you know what I mean? But then having like really hard, like Ted Bundy, like you basically have Ted Bundy stuck in a doll fucking horrifying yeah. and the other important thing that he tells little andy is that maggie was a real bitch and got what she deserved right yes. oh my god why would you say that i didn't say it chucky said it now your kid comes to you <laughs> <It's something laughs> like this. so one of the first things i was going to ask you guys as parents is do you go into a back alley and buy the hot toy from Ooh, if I was like in a seemingly situation, crazy yeah. homeless man, if uh, if, if I, I was in her situation, yes, yeah, Aww. where okay. I just gave sure. him like jeans in a big box, and it was like, oh, and then I had a chance to get it. Absolutely. Now this toy 100%. is in your home, and your kid has said these things. Something like this may have happened, or, and then your kid is like, "My new Chucky doll is actually named Charles Lee Ray." <laughs> And he right. told me that me Aunt Maggie things. is a bitch and deserved what <laughs> we'd get rid of that doll right away. I, doll's yeah. gone. Or, Honestly, yeah. <laughs> or at least at a minimum, like the doll's locked in a closet somewhere. Like it's uh, where it can't like I need to separate both of these. Like Even the like, kids only had Chucky for a couple hours at this point. Like there's a some yeah, attachment, of course. Of town. Dude, but the, like you can like pull out of that like the bonding that might happen yeah. you know between i don't like, care what kind of fits kid. i'm getting if this is what's happening like it won't take long before hopefully you yeah you've only had it for it. a few hours maybe you can get another fit. one when you're older and don't totally. tell me this these things <laughs> it is kind of crazy because i for whatever reason when i first watched this movie i thought the timeline was way longer where i feel like uh charles lee ray dies like, and then like a three few days. days like a few days later she buys the doll, and then the same fucking day the murder spree starts happening. I was like, that's, I always thought it was like a week later, or like, oh, a month later. It's like, no, this is all happening from like, this entire movie happens in a week. <laughs> that's yeah, crazy. It's, it's real quick. So Andy goes on about Chucky being real. Karen doesn't believe him. Uh, next day at school, Andy goes in, but then quickly comes back out, and he's playing hooky today, riding trains, uh -oh. just being a uh -oh. regular Ferris Bueller type, just hanging and out. <laughs> I do like it over um, Chicago. Oh, yeah. I do like when he gets dropped off. Um, the popularity of the good guy dolls that like it's you you see multiple. I mean, you see them in the toy store, but having a bunch of kids bringing their good guy dolls in that was a good mm -hmm. detail. Really, is yes, a cool detail yeah. because it just shows how popular they are. So, like having one of these walking around with a kid is so innocuous as well like like no one would think anything weird of yeah it. exactly and then uh so chucky's apparently whispering to andy telling him where to go 
seemingly a pretty bad neighborhood. It Very looks like. bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and nobody even looks over and is like, "Oh, oh well." Like it's nobody just would, like they I don't, think... don't notice him whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, just, this is a brave boy though. It, because he's in I Chicago. I would have been a little yeah. scared. Oh, on I'd my be terrified. Own. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, I mean, I do see in New York, or, I mean, this takes place in Chicago, which is a pretty big city as well, you just will see young kids. I mean, Six is really young. He's really young, and it's it's it should be more in noticeable. In a really Maybe bad would neighborhood. It be in this, but I feel like in this environment, I don't know. Everyone's people just got shit just going like, on. There's, you know, yeah. you look around, there's there's people fighting in the background. They're gonna, not going to notice a little kid walking around with a fucking yeah. giant doll. <laughs> right. But I've seen weirder and just been like, okay. And walked on. He's going, I guess, this is when we figure out that he's going to his old partner's- the Safe house. Safe house or whatever. The safe house where his partners hold up, I yeah. guess, right? Mm-hmm. And he's going to finally get his revenge. But he P-break. goes there. I don't know. I guess the pee break was convenient. Or like, did Chucky say, put me down and you can go pee? Because it's ultimately, Chucky- he gets put down on this chair in the middle of a field. And then yeah, Andy, Andy goes puts to him down in the chair. So because he was like, I have to go tinkle. Yeah, and but luckily it was off. like right where they needed to be. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, this is when Chucky goes off and starts creeping around in here and messing with uh, what the uh, his partner's name, which Eddie, I forget Eddie Caputo. Eddie, mm-hmm. Eddie Caputo. I this is awesome because in the fact of like when Chucky opens the door to the house. It's an actual doll's hand. And like when the gas sits turned on and stuff like that. So like you now are like instead of just this is the first. Yeah, it's the first hand like, oh, wow, this doll is moving like this isn't like a break Mm. in psyche. Like this is straight up like you're actually seeing the doll move. Yeah, you're seeing the doll hands do things. So it's like no more is Andy maybe doing it. So I guess at this point. Originally, maybe they wanted to. Ex- I, I don't know. I guess would not include that and just extend. Just is the because they wanted to yeah. play with the is Andy doing it thing. Right. You take out the doll hands and it still works as like Andy could. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you could easily have just changed this slightly so it's like Andy wanted the doll to wear mittens too so that his hands wouldn't get cold and like then you just see the mitten do the same exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> that that it would be. <laughs> I just imagine as like a giallo at that point with like a yes. gloved hand. Uh-huh. And it's like, yeah, yeah. But just in a brown chunky. trench coat running around. Exactly. Um, but I, I, I think to your point, Brian, I think that like, I don't think that Charles Lee Ray gives two shits what happens to Andy. Like, I think the bathroom <laughs> break was convenient, but I mean, the intent yeah. was like Andy was probably going to walk into that house with the doll. And then mm-hmm. because he's already showed himself, probably try to murder Eddie in front of the kid. If not, you know what I mean? Because, like, he's just, he almost, the kids, Andy almost gets shot in this sequence, right? Ish. I mean, he has a uh, yeah, gun pointed I, at him through a window. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that was from the, the dude. Well, so, I mean, yeah, so he, Andy comes back, sees that Chucky's gone, and starts, like, walking around the house and looking for him. And then that's when, like, the dude looks through the window and sees that it's just Andy screaming for Chucky looking for whatever and gets you know not concerned mm. by that Chucky at this point has also turned on the stove gas and just let that been running in the kitchen so that does he why does the guy just open the kitchen and just immediately shoot great question I think he's just <laughs> that's a very good question I think he's just he, strung out because uh, I mean like he does it once he gets the gun loads it runs down the stairs immediately takes like two shots does out he? of nowhere I don't remember. and then he's then he almost like he, he aims the gun at Andy earlier, yeah okay yeah so like there is a precedence for him just like opening up a door and just start shooting at the room sure okay. but it's well, also like why would you do like I so know. I think I, I think you're right that he might be a little strung out but also like I feel like Eddie knows the kind of guy that Charles Lee Ray is and he doesn't I mean, I, I don't know if he knows that Charles Lee Ray is dead. Oh, that's but true. He knows that, like, he would have, since he abandoned him, that he's. Yeah. But he's on the run, though. But he also, I forgot, totally forgot, he hears Chucky laughing, like, maniacally. Yeah. And that's when he goes back into the house. So I would okay. assume he'd probably be on, like, weird high alert. <laughs> to yeah. Like, Something freaky's going on. 
I personally wouldn't shoot first, but hey, to each their own. I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think like if you're if you're in that situation, you just open a door and shoot. You're going to get the person who's in there to hide behind something, right? So Right. That's true. Well, doing that causes all the fucking gas in that <laughs> room to explode oh the fuck out of this house. I'm wondering if they had like just extra footage of this house being destroyed because they must have had like this is the house that we're destroying because they we saw the whole house. It feels rumble. like they had the opportunity to destroy a house <laughs> right? in Chicago. Yeah, and we they, could do that. They did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just placed there and we get to see that happen. Boom, big explosion. And like we said before, there's a scene that was in there of Andy dipping down into a ditch, but we don't get that. Because like mm-hmm. right before this explosion, he's walking around like he's on right the, front, side, the front the of the stairs. house, yeah, yeah, like by yeah. the stairs, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he's fine because we go back to the police station. Detective Norris has called Karen down to the station, and Andy's already there. And they think that he has killed Maggie. They're kind of talking to him in another room and talking. We to also Karen. now have first parents. two murders, and there's no no gore to speak of at this point at all. Yes. Yeah. Very and true. as parents, if you were called down to the police station <laughs> and your child was there, how would you react? Oh, well, man. for me, this was the hardest scene. This was the most heartbreaking one for me when he's like, come on, Chucky, like, tell him you talk to me. Why won't you talk to them? This is trick. Uh, and he like starts punching yeah. it and stuff. And you yeah. see yeah. Chris and you... just sort of like pacing like, yeah, they're going to take out. me away if yeah. you don't oh. talk. Yeah, this is it's, the part where it's just like, oh yeah, my as a, god, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Ugh. But as a parent, I mean, like, obviously, like the last common denominator would be like, oh, the doll is real. You know what I mean? Like from Karen's perspective, like her kids had a psychological break. Yeah, exactly. Like, what am I? How, best what friend. are we gonna do? Yeah, this is still um, my son. Like, how do I do? What do I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, and Andy was has it, a, yeah. What was it the doctor? Uh... Doctor, I've Ardmore. heard enough. I've heard <laughs> enough. Like him and like talking, like I've seen enough. You know, like mm-hmm. Jesus. Well, this is also like I don't know. This is like late eighties psychological care, where they're like, okay, well, right. we'll just lock you in a Take thing for, for a few account. months, let you marinate, and then we'll try to diagnose you. Maybe. Then we'll ask you again how you're doing. <laughs> put him in a room with no window but bars over a hole. Like yes. there's no glass yeah, that, window yeah. though. Yeah, that's in ultimately Chicago what happened. Winter. So. As Sam said, Andy has that kind of meltdown, freaking so out, sad. asking Chucky, you know, why he's lied to him. He needs to tell everyone the truth. But Chucky's just doing this on purpose because he said he would kill Andy if anyone ever told or if he told anyone. We go back to the home where Karen, I guess, Andy's been separated from Karen. It's not really like, is they it really like stated that yeah, is what happened? Him. It's yeah. say that that probably will happen. Whatever. So that's what presumably happens because Carrie's Karen's coming home alone with Chucky and she tries talking to him and he says something, you know, like, I like to be hugged or one of his stupid little catchphrases. This, this whole scene in, in its entirety Ooh. is so iconic to me, it, especially the acting mm-hmm. with um, Karen, because she has her own little like let me try she's doing whatever she can to be like maybe he's right maybe he's right let me try Mm -hmm. and then she laughs it off she's like what the fuck am i doing oh my god like i this was just so believable and it was just her yes i don't know why they let her take chucky home i feel like this was like at the seat of the crime i feel like they should (laughs) have kept it in evidence locker somewhere (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. right but they let her take him take him home i thought this this whole scene was just genius and it also has one of my favorite favorite lines oh, which we'll yes. get to in, in I love the in brilliant shot of when she like sets him on the table and then goes to the kitchen and starts making something and you just see him sitting there in the background and you're He's waiting for him to move Ooh. yeah and she goes and gets the box and comes back into camera and nothing's changed he's still there but just like the anticipation of like you know something's going down yeah batteries yeah. fall and- out wait a second Wait exactly. That's place. such a great like stomach drop moment when like the batteries fall out and then you're like, I, there's a part of me that wishes that this was when we as the audience found out for sure right. that Chucky. Yeah. Like, like I wonder if I, that was originally think, planned that way. Probably. Yeah. I would assume that like you didn't know until Andy gets locked up 
And then, because, like, that's such a, for better choice of words, like, that's the Twilight Zone scene. You know what I mean? Like, you're led to believe one thing up until Mm -hmm. the inexplicable, and then it's, like, dawned upon the parent, like, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, there's been another killing, but they've been locked up type of thing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So it couldn't be who we thought. Yeah, The best way that I could describe this moment is, every, every time I see it, it's just like that black christmas or urban legend when they're like the calls are coming from inside the house yes that moment where you realize and it's like the the batteries was never never inside they they the bat the, the batteries were never unpacked holy fuck oh, this this what this, well then her yeah. like even like being like well then i have to make sure i guess that there's no Batteries. The music right now, the, the synth <laughs> music that is playing right now, just like, ooh, I, oh, did, I, so I, nuts. I guess I think I forgot about the score or something, but it is a really, we'll obviously touch on it later, but it is solid. A, it's a pretty solid, solid score. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, this is the point in the movie where I was watching with my wife and she says, this, now, now that you know that and there's no batteries in it, is that when you grab the duct tape? And then just mummify <laughs> this doll because still it's See, technically a doll. <laughs> yeah, like that. That was that was my thought. I'm like, I I wouldn't try to make it talk to me at that point. I'd be like, all right, I just need to burn this. Like, but on top of that, she goes to him, turns him around. Also, this is scary because you don't know what the fuck the doll, doll is gonna do. Mm-hmm. So you op- he she she opens oh, the battery no pack in the back, and there's nothing there. He instantly spins turns his head his, around, spins his head around, drops, rolls Hi, under I'm the Jackie. couch. Want to play? Yeah. Oh, nice. That Perfect. head spin. That head spin to this day gets me every single fucking time. Like I know oh, it's going one of the to scary happen. Moments I remembered from oh. when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. This is scary, and the fact that now he's under the couch and she's not only not just like immediately throwing the couch back right exactly. but she's going on her knees to get him out of there oh, slowly god that Kill slow me drag <laughs> like that excruciatingly slow shot of her pulling this thing out from underneath the couch i'm like just do it quick it's like a band-aid you're like just do it quick don't do it slow yeah just do it quick well that's the tension that's throughout this, this whole apartment scene is fantastic it's so good really good i find this scene so iconic because it builds up at to the to the point where she's just so frustrated that she's like talk to me god damn it or else i'm gonna throw you in the fire and he says my favorite fucking line out of all the all the movies his first words as chucky is you, you stupid, stupid bitch, bitch you, you filthy, filthy slut. slut i'll, I'll teach, teach you to, you to fuck, fuck with me, me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so now, what's is. funny about that is i to, to me it seems like you can tell or like now chucky would have kept going where in that it's like uh you stupid bitch you filthy slut i'll teach you to fuck with me <laughs> like he just kind of starts uh <laughs> Angry, angrily mumbling and groaning after that. Yeah. You know, when, like when you attack someone and you just need to make noises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a fear of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is. Well, he great, kind of, uh, like, you get hints of that during the salvo. chase scene wh- when he's getting shot at too, because he does make a lot of weird audible like. <laughs> 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 so, as parents, <laughs> Chucky has stayed in your house still, and. Mm-hmm. It has come to this point. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you know, you think the best thing or what the state has determined is that your child has been taken away. Mm-hmm. They have given you the doll to take home. <laughs> you have taken it <laughs> the home. Doll is and real. then this happens. Like, I mean, I feel like I've definitely had instances where the batteries have been out of a toy I've had, but for some reason it still had just enough juice to, mm. to do one, something. One last little thing out of it. I, like, <sighs> the head turns, you open it up, the batteries aren't there, the head turns around, and then it rolls up and it's still no, he hasn't revealed not. himself it's still playing dead it's it's so you, you i think this is the definitive difference as of when i was watching this as a parent because it also that, just like, talked to you before that i, I it, totally but i guess it's like oh, sure for me i wouldn't I, I guess threatening to burn it to try to make it talk is one thing but i obviously i think i would have restrained it first somehow oh, and yeah. then threatened it just because you want to prove your child's sanity, you have to prove. Yeah, <laughs> like at that point, my first priority is proving Andy's innocence mm, versus sure. destroying this thing outright. Yes. Which is, 
obviously it's more the preservation Perfect. of my kid versus the preservation of everyone else on the planet. Because at that oh. point, like, the logical thing would probably be just to utterly destroy this thing yeah. right from Jump Street. But it's like, I need to restrain this thing because I need to... Let me clear my kid first, and then we can kill the evil dog. Absolutely. So, then he goes full on Chucky, has Oof. all fun of uh, his expletives. And this and is the first him. time we see his face change. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, he, he actually everything see about him changes. The grimace, yeah. like the mm-hmm. act, like actual expression. That's oh. a really cool effect. Like, you see it in real time, just his face, whatever. We can just, yeah, yeah I mean, the... Character effects of Chucky are fantastic oh, in this yes. movie. I forgot awesome. how good, how so good, superb he he Absolutely. was designed. I, I mean, mean the, like, when we get the running around the apartments and stuff like oh, that, yeah. where it's yeah. clearly a child or a little mm. person is a mm-hmm. little funny to see. But yes. like the mm-hmm. the animatronic Chucky stuff is awesome. Yeah, I've never seen th- something so cool look so fucked up. <laughs> As in, like, they show, like, especially at the last act of the movie, mm-hmm. how fucked up the doll gets, is that all the animatronics mm-hmm. leading up to it, it's also amazing, too, because it's supposed to look like a doll, and then as he's inhabiting his host, he's turning more and more human, so, like, the doll itself is turning into this weird abomination kind of like plasticky human yeah. like it gets more human features as the movie goes on and to me that's even more off-putting like it can't even look like a normal doll anymore <laughs> like, it and just... that's something i feel like i never would have thought about and these people did they were like how would a doll look human as it progresses throughout the movie like how do you mm, make yeah. that happen and they did it like mm-hmm. this is yeah accurate in my eyes because it starts growing like blood and like a heart and like all these different things mm. and well, you're like teeth. i don't feel like it's uh, the eyes maybe change. i guess i didn't didn't really notice do they i didn't notice hit. i know that was supposed to be a, a part of it is that he yeah. is turning more turning the doll more human but i never yeah. thought it looked i thought he always just looked like a Doll. To me, I feel like he starts off but, as a doll, and then as it goes, I mean, obviously, you're seeing him a lot more. I mean, more I know when he changes the animatronics and is angry and like really going full Chucky, it looks the the different than what the good guy change. is. But yeah, his I features think, change. But I feel yeah. like it still looks like a doll because I know one of the things was that they wanted to have yes. more of those physical features changing, of like him growing stubble and shit out of his face. Oh wow, yeah, really? Turn- <laughs> That yeah, one I, I, at least for me, it read that like he started like the Chucky doll started turning human and like the more up until well, I, the final act. It's like I it's, get that from the yeah. inside, but I didn't see it on the outside. Oh, I, saw, yeah. uh, I think for me, sense. I I thought that when she had him in the air, that Chucky looked very different to the Chucky when he's speaking to the, the voodoo doctor guy. Like he seemed a little more. No, I don't want to say elderly, but like more, there was more wrinkles to him. Like I thought he, that like close up shot looked different than the I one when Karen you. had, when she, he, he first came alive in front of her. Yes. I think it, it, I think it rather than looking more human, I mean, I guess it is more human, but it is still not human. It's like this weird hybrid. Yeah. 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 Oh, sure. So, Chucky, after this point, runs off. Karen chases, but can't find him. So she goes and finds Detective Norris to tell him that Andy was telling the truth about Chucky. And he, of course, doesn't believe her. So she shows him the bike mark. And is like, where the hell did I get this? And she's like, he's like, I don't know. Where did you get that? And who did that? And, but still doesn't really believe. So she decides to go off on her little hunt to find Chucky. Oh which God. brings but, us to our montage of Karen going through the bad parts of town. But Brian, bad he doesn't like loose town. ends. Yeah, I'm a loose end. You should follow... Is that this scene? Oh, <laughs> yes. just, like, you should follow up on me or whatever. And like, that was end. just a pickup line, lady! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's like, I don't actually like, abide by that. This is not how you're supposed to use it on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so then we have the fun montage of her, yeah, just going around to all the homeless people being like, have mm-hmm. you seen this person i'm looking for this guy who sold me this weird doll eventually that, she finds him <laughs> that fucking guy dude oh my god bad guy yeah and this ain't enough he what wants some money that not enough money so it starts to get it's about to get real Ugh. rapey real quick Very. but luckily detective norris shows Comes up to like save the, the day hero he is he's like huh. exactly and, huh. pulls a gun the cop pulls a gun out and points it at everybody and makes them run and then they take off gets, immediately as soon as the gun comes out it's a out, cop like, and then they run away yeah. Ah. Yeah. 
this makes up so he starts getting the info from our our gentleman that sold chucky and this is when he makes a realization that it was it could be or is charles lee ray the doll came from the store where the murder yeah. mm-hmm. or the killing yeah. happened and he's more open to believing this now and karen's making the connection and she's already up, pretty much made the connection but now she's like how did he transfer to the doll he's like i know yeah. who it is how did he get there let's figure that out and wants he's to go into it yeah yeah to his house basically and we get her going there but also at the same time i think right we get he's gonna drive somewhere on his own or something well, exactly. he's, going he's going home initially he he was like what this is kind of weird and then he goes karen shut up go home go home karen <laughs> yes and then he like yes. secretly goes to like figure like pull charles oh, he, Ray's that's right. file but mm-hmm. she's like i'm gonna go right. visit his apartment anyways and yeah. she does and then this is also when he is he driving attacked. that chunky Holy makes his shit. move on mm-hmm. norris and starts strangling him oh this yeah. fucking yeah. real this car scene, ass <laughs> car scene. <laughs> And now this is what's I love. This is the best part about having a doll one is that like the strangulation is one thing where it's like, all right, he's fucking choking him out. And then like, like just that scene is cool. But then the fucking butcher knife oh, through yeah. the back of the seat and then underneath the seat because he's so goddamn tight. Like, he it's a little fit- funny. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, very funny. I love the shots of him like lifting his legs up, like trying to pull his whole body oh, off shit. the bottom of his yeah. seat so he doesn't get stabbed. Very so silly. I'm gonna have to assume so- that Chucky's strength is the same of Charles Lee Ray. It's Ant Man yeah. yeah. rules. It's what? What's it's, that? It's Ant Man rules because he's so yeah, exactly. small. Oh. The- yeah. The strength leads to greater momentum, which is how he's somehow able to get the angle right to stick the knife in from under the seat. Oh my god! <laughs> but it seems right. like he also crawls under the seat because doesn't he like apply the the gas at some point? Oh yeah, he's, oh, he's yeah. touching Obviously, the gas yeah. down to try to crash the car. He's like a little gerbil mm-hmm. flying around everywhere, <laughs> over there, but trying to take <laughs> around <laughs> stuff. So that's funny. Yeah, we get this shit flying around, car smashing into everything stabby driver's seat and then the car flip because we have to have a car flip yeah mm-hmm. chucky more fighting while he's stuck in there shooting at him this is when he gets shot yes and like oh we ta- also get um, like cries and just runs the away cigarette burn into <laughs> yes, the cigarette oh, yeah. into his cheek before the car like, wreck yeah chucky's like what the fuck <laughs> like it's yeah. screaming in pain from this this is what leads also charles lee ray chucky to go back to his voodoo doctor dr death i believe is what they call him his mentor and yeah be like what the hell man i'm hurting not tony todd yeah not Not, tony todd that'd be fun missed opportunity if it was bloodworth (laughs) right well just pretend it is we've the final destination and chucky exists in the same universe um it is such a cool scene though where like he's chased like he's he's he the knife goes into the car and then like he's trying to go and he pulls the knife out and he's about to stab him again and then gets shot in the shoulder. Can you imagine thinking you're completely invincible and then actually sh- getting shot as as Chucky and him being like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Ow, you shot me. You shot, you shot, shot me, me right in the arm. <laughs> <laughs> Karen's at Charles Lee, uh, Charles Lee Ray's old place. This is where we get the crazy voodoo murals oh all God. on the wall learning about Audibly all that kind of stuff. Loud. Norris shows up with some info about Chucky. That was his nickname, and he spent a lot of time with this man. It shows this picture of someone named John Bishop, a.k.a. Dr. Death. <laughs> Leads us to John Bishop's place where Chucky has shown up, and it's all like, I did this shit to transfer my body. Check it out. Look how awesome I am. Yeah. But now I got this problem. I'm injured, and it hurt, and I'm kind of bleeding, and what's up and with that? What the fuck's going <laughs> on with this? Yeah. <laughs> and he ultimately learns that he is becoming more human the longer he is in his body and he's going to get stuck in that presumably I'll live my life out as a doll yeah so he's like i'm not cool with that and <laughs> i want to figure out how to not do that so this is when we get a sweet little voodoo doll scene of him just like Ooh, snapping his leg and snapping his yeah, the, the legs right. and the appendages and all that and ultimately he gives up that he needs to go to andy the first person that he revealed his secret to him to his true self his true self and that's what if i mean 
I don't know. It's, it's like, an interesting ha, ha, thing six year old to boy, have nice. revealed yourself. <laughs> what if yeah, is there like, amount of time that you do need to have revealed yourself? Like I don't if I was a killer that transferred my soul into a toy, I don't know if I would reveal myself. Yeah, but I don't ever. know. Charles Lee Ray was using that as part of his manipulation. Maybe yeah, he's like, he I need to use that too. It. Yeah, and totally. it's just all lucky that it was just it was just the right circumstances here. <laughs> Him Oh my god, him realizing it was like he's fucking st- he's like, I'm gonna be six years old again. It's like, oh god. Like just the <laughs> idea of Charles Lee Ray with his own mentality of a psychopath yeah. in the body of a six year old is fucking horrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And this ultimately leads to Chucky getting the knowledge that he needs, so he stabs the doll, kills the dude. We get a little bit of blood here. I mean, this yeah. is the first instance of some some real blood, but the the stab or what's happening isn't really you don't see yeah. much because it's this a voodoo is like doll. The goriest scene in the movie, right? I think so yeah, I, think so. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's a close tie doll with gore, I guess. Bones break in and the blood. This is yeah. also the first time we see like more of the animatronics that are taking place. Yeah, like we mm. see him move a lot more, and we see him like move his lips. So I, this whole right. was pretty cool to see. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The windowsill is just like, oh, oh, God. Oh, OK. All right. <laughs> yeah. Karen and Norris roll up after all this happens and find the dude bleeding on the floor. This is like he's in like a fucking pool of blood at this point. There's a lot yeah. of blood from I what we blood. just saw. I just feel bad because they... like he's trying to tell them like what they need to do. And Karen's like, what? What? And I'm like, just listen. He's only has like a few <laughs> times, a few le- huh? moments left. Keeps huh? interrupting. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> But then they do learn that she learns that Chucky's heart must be destroyed. That's the way that he needs to be killed. Mm-hmm. Cut to our mental health facility. Andy's looking out his fucking prison window and sees that Chuck is chucking. Chucky Chuck. is making his way into the building. Chucking. So we get Climbing a little some, like, yeah, flight of stairs is like, ah, fuck. Uh, yeah. This That's scene. Very conveniently looked out at the right time. I mean, I this guess. Is I, also what else are you going to be do? This scene was, I was like, give, give, um, Alex, Alex, Vincent. Vincent. Alex Vincent a fucking Oscar because yeah. I n- had oh. never seen a child feel so scared and heartbroken like that. Oh, he's gonna kill me! I, I instantly cried. welled up. <laughs> yeah, like I, it's hilarious to me is that this mo- that scene never hit me the way it did like sure. before and i'm sitting there and i'm yeah. like because it's just so authentic where yeah. you're like he's just like legit like please don't leave me in here like uh, please let's like someone listen to me and understand what i'm saying like oh it was so raw and i was like how the f- you're seven <laughs> years yeah. old acting well, like this is, they told this him act- to act sad and act like his parents had died <gasps> Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> what oh my fuck? god! That, that, I guess okay. that's the direction that he got for that that's one. The there, so that's, that's, that's the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce. That's acting, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Chucky sneaks his way in, climbing on, climbing on windowsills, stealing Snatching keys, your pe- people sneaking up. about. He gets into Andy's room, but surprise, Andy tricks Chucky with the old pillow under the blanket trick. <gasps> and Andy runs away and tries to hide from Chucky. There's a little bit of tussling going around. Uh, he pops into the doctor who's trying to, you know, he's about fucking thinking, obviously, Andy's crazy. Chucky's not yeah. real. Andy's mm-hmm. running away from Chucky. Leads him into this, I don't know, medical room of sorts where <laughs> he tries giving him the sedative. Yeah. Andy's like, <laughs> they have another little sedative? tussle. I think Chucky does another like barrel roll somewhere else underground. So Andy's like, you know, like looking around or whatever. And this is when the doctor comes in and like grabs him and tries to give him the sedative. And Chucky grabs a scalpel, doesn't, you know, does what he does best, stabs a leg and attaches, I guess, some electroshock therapy head thing Helmet onto the dock him. and turns it up to 11 and fucking cranks that thing. And as Andy is screaming, stop, please don't. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he, and this like, dock but gets fried. He like says, like, stop, stop. And then he's like, doesn't say it anymore because he's just he's now up. fully he's like, shocked. He's he's in, yes. he's traumatized at this moment. He's because he's never he, he's. He wasn't there for Maggie's death, but this is probably the first person first, he this sees first die. seeing yeah. die. Mm-hmm. And what a fucking death. I mean, like, yeah. this guy gets his, like, char broiled. Like, they go from, yeah. like, electroshock to, like, his skin blackening to his eyes turning, like, bl- like yeah. maroon red. Mm-hmm. And then, like, he... Bleh. Like, this one was pretty decent. I was like, so okay. bleed a little. It, yes. They goo out. There's there's yes. goo, eye goo that oozes out that we see a little bit. That's good. And I mean, that's the next like 
goriest thing if you want yeah. to call it gory it's just an intense scene of someone's like head getting fried it's intense, awesome. you know comparatively um so all that happens there sweet great Karen and Norris arrive at the facility but learn Andy has escaped and Karen says that he would go home basically that's what she's always told him to do if he's in danger and trouble to go home this leads us back to the apartment Andy arrive home Andy arrives home starts to barricade the door and we get a nice little scene with an old couple on an elevator oh, yeah. a Chucky doll there some kid must have left their doll she's like ugly doll what an ugly Chucky, doll. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I love that. As the elevator goes like, fuck you. <laughs> Andy is hiding in his closet at this point and finds a little like little baseball bat. He's like, oh, this will this will be good. And Chucky pulls the Santa, drops down in the chimney. Mm-hmm. And then we get Chucky, you know, stalking, finds Andy, chases Andy. We get real fun shots of like of the POV, like looking at Chucky running. Yes chasing andy Mm -hmm. that's some real fun Mm -hmm. stuff chucky sneaks up to andy and basically knocks him out with that little wooden bat Bat and this is when he starts to perform our little ritual here right as karen and norris are rushing up to the building you know the fucking thunder and lightning starting to swirl on in so they rush up uh into the apartment ultimately and this just in time because karen pulls chucky off andy and like they throw chucky flying (laughs) he pulls out a knife comes back stabs norris in the leg chucky runs off norris goes to find him chucky you know does his best that's what he does best surprise attack Mm. yep and that's how he's got to get you knocks knocks out norris uh karen pops in and shoots chucky in the leg her gun jams so then she has to you know run away chucky chases after then he gets trapped in the fireplace. Ooh. At this point, she's like, Andy, I, you got to get help. She's trying to get matches. And he's I need even you to more shocked. Like, he's like, Ugh. yeah, he's just like, holy shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> this fucking doll I loved, you know, 24 hours ago yeah. is insane. And again, <laughs> I've gone again. Chucky, instead of being like, give me the fuck out of here, fucker. And just, uh, you know, <laughs> <how Rita cusses, laughs> he's just, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of his version of scatting, I think. Yes. It's oh, like no. right no. screaming. Mm-hmm. And Andy fucking gets up. All right. He grabs a match. Ray's about to strike it. Chucky's like, we're friends to the end, remember? To which Annie, Andy, you know, fucking applause on a six-year-old being able to come up with like a one-liner yeah. like this. This, this is, is the, the end, end. Friend. friend. And then lights him up Boom. like he's been watching his Schwarzenegger or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He really Absolutely. Has. Yeah. And Chucky burning to death. Holy shit. Yeah. I was thinking maybe, do you think the movie Sick was trying to uh, like emulate this scene? Yes. You know, at the end with <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, we get Chucky yeah, wandering around, getting burned, walk, walking up the couch, you know, just leaving his little burn yeah. fire and stuff like that. See, but we didn't adhere to the dying voodoo priest's last words was his heart. Get it through his heart. There you go. Well, luckily you're thinking about that because they did not. <laughs> but they hear Norris wake up and they're like, oh, we got to go help him. So they run off. Karen asks Andy, you gotta go get that first aid kit. Uh, it's in the kitchen. So she runs back into the living room while this happened. And this is when we notice that Chucky is no longer there. His burnt pile of ashes is gone. Uh, and now we get burnt up Chuck you creeping totally. on Andy. And oh. uh, eventually trying to get at Karen and Andy and Norris and stab it through the door. And we get this like, you know, like shining moment type of thing. It's like one of my favorite lines in this fucking movie is just this panicked Charles Lee Ray screaming, give me the child and I'll spare your life. Oh, yeah. Like, give, me the, would, give me the boy. Give me the girl. Give me the oh, boy. Yeah, and I'll spare your either. life. Yeah. Like uh-huh. that kind of fucked up. You're like, no, he's not. But like he's now the part of like bargaining. He's desperate. He, like, He's really desperate, yeah. wants it. So they're yeah. doing this, yeah, this back and forth, trying to keep him out of the room they're in. But ultimately, it leads to another chase. He gets them out down the hallway, and then... He's decided that he's going to walk down the hallway at him. But anyway, Karen takes out a gun and fucking pops his head off, which <laughs> yes. awesome. Hey, that yeah. comes fine. But the body keeps going. So she it, shoots give again. Karen some some good some good action here. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, she starts nailing it. She like, sh- shoots an arm off, yeah. shoots a leg off. It's like fucking Terminator up also, in here. Chucky's still also, I crawling. Gotta, I got to say, 
Detective Norris, I mean, why were you in this movie? Like, I feel like he did practically nothing. And when we were in the action, he got shot immediately and was down for the count. (laughs) It is really There really was no reason to have him, like, no. (laughs) Yeah. Back, was it? Because it's not like him being with Andy was the reason Andy was in trouble, right? Because it seems like, like, you could have had generic cop. You could have just had Charles Lee Ray die in the beginning and have it transfer, and then have the story. Totally. Yeah, still I have feel like cops interaction. He was only but... in there to save her during the homeless attack. Attack, right? Yeah. I think <laughs> also. I think the only reason for him being there at the end, including the partner, was that like now there's two other witnesses. Yeah, that would that's fair. clear Andy. You know what I mean? Sure. Where it's like yeah, in right. any other scenario, all this would be said and done, and then Andy would still probably wind up in a in a psychiatric facility for the rest of his life. So they start blasting, um, and then she walks up, fucking gives them two taps into the back, and seemingly we're we're done with Chucky now. And Norris's partner fucking pops up being a goof. Uh, they go back in and check on Norris. So he's all like, everything they said is true. It's the doll. And Horms is like, nah, that's that's crazy. I'm gonna go check it out real quick he wants not runs in, when he walks in and, like, and he said don't touch it. anything leave it there so he goes and touches yep. the doll's head of course brings he it in just like plops up in front of this family who whether you believe it or not just had this weird experience with this doll yeah. so why would that's a little insensitive but <laughs> yeah he's like here you go look at this thing that just caused you terror and this caused fucking vent baby Chucky to come yes. out and <gasps> vent babies, vent babies, vent babies yeah. the return of vent babies, <laughs> and just latch onto this dude's like neck and I just love Chucky saying, like, "Yes, choke him, don't let go, grab the <laughs> dog." Yeah, that's hilarious. All this is happening. Eventually, you know, flings him off, um, and Norris pulls out his gun. Karen's like the heart. You got to shoot him in the heart. Through the heart. And then we get a fucking shot through the heart. Shot through the heart. Thank you. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> this, to blame? this did it. Chucky sending him back. Calling him up. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say flying it's kind of funny too. You see the like blood spray out his back and then the body goes <laughs> flying back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's left of it. Oh, and then you have this creepy ass moment where the burned head is that goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Chucky. Chucky wanna, wanna play? I was like, <laughs> sweet animatronics again. That's yeah, fucking so gross. insane. And I think that was amazing too. Is that like as fucked up and as battle damaged as Chucky gets by the end of the film? Showing hit that animatronic just like slumping over and then folding in on itself. Oh and yeah, then, like, that was cool. Dying. It was like. It's such a cool thing to have something that fucked up still be a full animatronic and have that much expression. Yeah. I also like that they didn't hold back with Chucky. I felt like he was, they needed to make him a worthy villain and like hold some threat to these people. And I think they did that. Totally. Especially his, that indestructible kind of like, oh fuck. It's like, that's the hardcore super. I mean, it's a doll, but like the hardcore super match, like, oh no, he's not going down because he's a doll. Yeah. Well, he went down, this doll. And and Andy just, like, starts staring at the body, and then I like how they all just leave the room and are like, oh, shit, Andy's still in there. And Karen comes back to get Andy, and she's just leading him away as he's just kind of staring back, and we get this weird little freeze frame. I don't know what it's trying to imply, but if there was an implication, it, it, it feels intentional for whatever yeah. purpose that is i'm like, not sure but maybe, we get the freeze frame of that goes to our credits yeah maybe like, like andy's gonna like is possessed a, yeah. or is gonna start doing this or something there's some sort of implication there almost like a roy jarvis thing you right know? any of that stuff and that well, yeah that leads us to the end well and I, I think it makes sense too because we did see chucky get part of the way through the chant enough that the lighting was crackling and yeah, mm-hmm. so it could give you that like is he in was this all uh i always mm-hmm. thought it was like Dream. especially with like the little like xylophone little bring, like at the end when it goes to the freeze frame mm-hmm. i just thought like okay let's look at this kid who is obviously in a different place than when we first met him and he was this happy-go-lucky kid he is completely huh. different now the, and then we get tor- a sick-ass theme song that we never hear again this <laughs> is 
yeah, yeah. Then he's just goth. I mean, Andy would be goth from this point on, where he's like, all right, I'm just a nihilist at seven years old. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So let's go ahead and jump into our crematorium of questions in just a moment. Ooh. Hey, we're going to ask some questions. Do a little thing. <laughs> Do a little thing. <laughs> <laughs> our first one is kind of, you know, I think it's a good one to talk about here. Do you think you could survive Chucky? Chucky. Charles Lee mm. Ray as Chucky, not as his murderous um, child's self. play. Head to head. A child's play as well. Head to i no, I think I would survive head to head, but so. he's a surprise killer, though. Mm-hmm. So I feel if he got the drop on me, I feel like my probability would slink down pretty low. But if I knew he was coming, I could prepare myself and we we're kind of going like head to head. I feel like I could probably take the doll out. <laughs> in a battle royale. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just you too. I think if it's a world in which I know Chucky the doll is a murderous doll, like if I've accepted that already. Yeah. I'll be I think I can. I think I can take him. If I don't like, if I don't think, oh, I'm like that doll's nothing. I'm gonna. I I feel like the surprise kill right. will get me. But huh. if I'm like in a world where I know he's, I'm gonna watch for the surprise. I'm gonna surprise him. Ooh. I mean, he gets fucking fooled by a pillow under a blanket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think true. in that situation where it's me versus a doll, I don't know. Do you think I it's think like uh, cosplay takes down Jason? Is it pillows that take down? <laughs> pillows yes it's pillows his arch nemesis but i don't know again that goes to yeah how much strength really does he have as the doll like and it's not really explained what his his power level i guess yeah did you think you would survive yes is not particularly deadly he uses a voodoo doll which he do- will not have of me he tricks a guy into shooting a room full of gas who, which I want to do. Um, I guess I might get flying hammer attacked out a window. Um, but he tr- attacks the cop. The cop faces off with him. He faces off against a, a single mom and a six-year-old. I think I would be okay. <laughs> I agree. I agree with you. Do you agree? Right. Yeah, I think yeah, so. I, 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 I think I agree with his logic. Because I, I think like if I if I know for a fact that Chucky's alive, then yeah, there's there's ways of, of taking care. I mean, hell, you could just like throw a blanket on top of him and pull the corners together. Done. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's probably like a you throw a blanket on him, he's like a dog and gets confused yeah, yeah. and is trying to get <laughs> his way out of there. <laughs> what about you? Perfect. What do you think? Yeah. I think I could I think this one I think that I mean this I know this movie this movie and this movie in particular we might yes. learn things in particular later on i really forget about a lot of the lore of chucky i just know when the tv series it gets crazy but yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll get we'll get to where we're going with it but i think this one's doable all right perfect now i think we all can agree that a little bit more blood goo something yeah could have yeah yes put this to the next level i feel like i feel like that's uh-huh. why this kind of sat always lower on my I don't know, view a de- or or need to get to when I was younger mm-hmm. or anything like that yeah. or revisit. Yeah, it's refingerable, it if you will. Yeah, it, it never was refingerable. Yeah. Wait, Thanks, hold Sam. on. Really, Is that like really the ability <laughs> to finger it Wait. again? <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, wait, what? Wait, hold on. I mean, <laughs> Sam came up. up with this on our re-ratings and we were kind of surprised that we wow. never came up with before but when we were like uh, re-rating our movies since we use fingers to rate them are we like giving it more or less fingers <laughs> i guess we're re-fingering it oh my god i love it <laughs> but yeah goo level needs to go up i think that's pretty uh yeah especially totally. I just saw, that like one. with maggie's death he could have just like slit her her throat and then yeah, yeah there's way or bloodier ways you could have like ground, disposed of could everyone could have been uh, bigger oh, splat. Yeah. We could have seen the guy blown up think... somehow, or body parts. Who knows? Yeah. Do you think it's because Andy was like the actor was so young in that movie? Do you think they wanted to like n- not neuter the gore in it? But I mean, like a lot of stuff that's going on around this time is a lot gorier. You know what I mean? Like 
Uh, the only way to say no is because I mean, our first kill, he doesn't even see. Those. Like exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's true. He didn't have to be in the um, scene. Like also, as an actor. if you think about it, this is around the time where the Friday the Thirteenth were getting like the most censorship they had. Yeah. Had. Oh, that's true. I, well, there could have been an uh, a, a avoiding that type of thing, mm-hmm. or or. or all the money, all the special effects budget went to making Chucky. Therefore, they're like, uh, <laughs> we got no money for blood. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, actually, that Sorry. might be true. <laughs> it does kind of, it tries to be a smart slasher. You know what I mean? It's not just a bunch of teens. It's like, not, yeah. Behaving badly, getting murked. It's like, yeah. you got the family dynamics, the crime, the, uh, there's, there's different stuff going on. Yeah. It's That's why around. Ebert was like, well, it wasn't fucking er- terrible. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so it should be gooier. Brian had to take off, so I'm going to lead us from here. Up next, we have was, villain level. <laughs> he was so upset there wasn't 10. enough goo in this, he just marched directly <laughs> off of the recording. Mm-hmm. This is the movie where just he stops. That. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> villain level, 1 through 10. I'm- Power level, 1 through 5. Iconic- <sighs> Iconography, 1 through 5. I kind of want to give Chucky a, a pretty high score. I mean, he iconography. I gotta give a five. I'm gonna say a five for yeah. iconic. And oh, he's I, huge. Mm-hmm. I think that he's. I mean, he's a he's a manipulative asshole who kills people. Yes. So yes. you know, <laughs> I I think it's supernatural. Yeah, I think especially in this movie because you see like more directly than you do in any of the other movies. Mm-hmm. Um, the like manipulation of Andy and like trying to get away with things by framing him. Um, Mm -hmm, I think that mm -hmm. he's like especially villainous in this movie. I agree. I will give him a 10. Ooh. All right. I like that. Yeah. I will give him a seven because I can't give him a 10 and say, oh yeah, I could like survive he's surviving <laughs> no i like i get definitely five for iconography absolutely yes um i think his power level to me is like it's like resting on like a three 3.5 the only reason why i'm not giving it a full thing is that obviously he could body jump so like this is just an incar like chucky at this point is just an incarnation of charles lee ray yeah but um he's at this point he is still a doll and at, and also turning human, so he can technically be killed. The only reason why I'm not getting it down a peg, because like I feel like if he's a doll and didn't have the like the negative aspects of turning human, this would be a ten all day because he's basically an unstoppable serial killer in a doll's body. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, thank you, thank you, Sergio. That was very <laughs> insightful. Uh, <laughs> does this movie deserve a sequel? What's your sequel idea? We know it has sequels. Pretend it doesn't. If you were going to make your own sequel to the this movie, Child's Play, 1988, what would your sequel be? So I almost, and maybe this is maybe this is unpopular opinion, uh, but I almost think that this would be like. It, this would be great as a standalone movie just like yeah that's it it's done like i because i don't know in the way that like if i were the one directing this movie and how i would have changed it where like it's much more ambiguous for most of the movie about whether or not chucky is alive i think that it would you wouldn't be able to do that again um mm-hmm. right so i i think that you gotta go full on chucky yeah so i <laughs> i think that that i would probably have this be standalone personally yeah no i mean like if there's uh, bold choice <laughs> but it's also it, it 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 does end on a real i mean a really good i mean he's completely eviscerated i was thinking the only sequel that i would have off of this is that if it would be like not a coroner but like someone working in like i don't know tr- put trying to put chucky back together as evidence and inadvertently bringing him back to life so having Ooh. like a, a medical assistant or someone of the force like actually going up against Chucky all fucked up and deranged in like I don't know like a coroner's office or like a like a police station or something like that would just be super weird and then maybe having him jump bodies to something else I would put him into space you know how eventually oh, just jump right, oh, to space. Jump right yeah. into space <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> That's fucking great. It's like Terminator 2 Judgment Day. This is this is where it goes. 
Well, <laughs> that one doesn't go to space, but <laughs> that's uh, Chucky would be the good guy. Yeah, in your wait, sequel. he's really the good guy, and there's like another. He's, he's actually the good guy. Oh yeah. shit! See, that's that's my sequel. Perfect. How about that? Or yeah, no, a good guy, an actual good guy, is now in a Chucky doll, and Chucky's actually gone into something else. Mm. And... Oh. oh, Andy is in Chucky, and Chucky's in Andy. It's a face-off situation. Oh that's shoot. Oh. I agree. Damn. Which I kind of, you know, got from your idea. But that's just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> would you buy the soundtrack or score on vinyl? Now, I know we kind of touched on this before. Yes, I would. I would too. I actually am hunting for it because it was on Amazon before and I forgot to get it. And now it's sold out. Mm. Um, before, no. Watching it now, yes. Like, I didn't realize how okay. good the soundtrack was or the score to this was until viewing it this time. For whatever reason, I completely just went glossed Agreed. right over it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't seek it out, but if I came across it and it was, you know, relative within my price range, <laughs> not priced out because it's some print that's not around anymore, yeah. only true fans get, I would definitely grab one because um, it is pretty strong. Anything action figure worthy? I ask <laughs> as I've been staring at it. Yeah. Oh, good guy, I was going to say, like, size. when we get to the merch part of, of all this, I'm like, I mean, there's already so much that is built off of this movie that yeah. already exists. Mm -hmm. uh, there's plenty full, but uh, yeah, yeah, action figure for sure. Absolutely. He, yeah, he already is. And, <laughs> and then merch or prop from the movie. I want Chucky's melted head at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. That's a good that's one. Good. With little teeth in there. I'd probably do the uh, the ritual knife that he holds. Oh, at the yeah. End, where it's got that uh, weird, yep. like that white the on little red squiggle. Bone. Squiggle. Yeah. That'd be a fun one. But I'd keep it in the kitchen. Like, it would just be only for, like, slicing pears or something like that. Mm. I would Your want knife? The, breakfast, my paring knife. the breakfast that Andy made. Ooh. Um, just gla shadow box. <laughs> glazed over and I'll just <laughs> just just dumped with epoxy resin on top of yeah, it. Yeah, it's like a In table case forever. Yeah. yeah. I would like a custom Lego set of the apartment with the window uh busted out and oh. the babysitter like down oh. on the ground Wait, outside. That's cool. I would like yes. Lego. Get on there'd that. have to be one that you could yeah. somehow kind of have her like in midair. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Poking oh out of the God. side of the building. You know, it's just going to be an inevitability before Lego is going to do iconic horror. Horror. Like, horror oh, yeah, stuff. they should. Well, because they already like they're 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 building up to it more because now they have like you can get the Lego like certain art pieces you can make a lego set that's yes. the art piece or right. like there, the flowers speaking and... of action figure i do think like I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with neca the the brand mm -hmm. neca like they mm -hmm. create all those like figurines of harsh stuff or just stuff in general uh but i believe they made one of the burnt chucky with the knife kind of like mm. walk i was like oh i didn't get that that's amazing yes burnt chucky would be a fucking amazing addition a life-size version of it would oh. be even... See, now that's creepier. scary. I think he, he looks really, really scary that way. <laughs> <laughs> All the better. Oh, actually, another prop that I would want from the film, just because I didn't get a chance to say it earlier, is I want the magically reappearing dishes that uh, happen in oh the kitchen. Oh, my God. <laughs> so there's yes. a... <laughs> if, you, if you didn't know, there's a blooper sort of thing, like a, a film mistake, where um, when the... When Maggie. Maggie is um, getting Andy ready for bed, she is taking some dishes that were drying on the counter and putting them away. And then when she yells back to say, are you brushing your teeth? And he says, yes, Aunt Maggie. And then we cut back to the kitchen. She's reaching around to put the dishes away again. Oh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we can blame it on Chucky, though. That was 100% <laughs> Chucky. Definitely missed that. Anybody have anything for the midnight show, or should we move on to our rating? I think, uh, ra I mean, unless you guys, I, I don't have anything for the midnight show. Wait, remind us of the midnight Lisa. show. It's oh, like what you would yell at the screen. Or, or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you we, filthy bitch. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, stupid, you stupid bitch, bitch you filthy, filthy slut. slut. I'll teach you to fuck with me. Yeah, I'd yell that. To, yeah. yeah, that's... <laughs> Perfect. And then just a bunch of foam hammers get thrown. Oh, uh, batteries. Yeah. Yes. Batteries get thrown at the screen. Like a Phillies game, yeah. I love it. Yeah. That sounds dangerous, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Moving on to our ratings. It's time to uh, sacrifice our fingers to the voodoo gods and uh, rate this movie. We rate on a scale of zero to five fingers based on different qualities about a movie. Mm-hmm. Subjective, not subjective. How we feel about it doesn't matter if it's good. So let's get started with Ross. Oh, okay. Um, oh, shit. Engaging. Um, even though I've seen this movie a bunch of times, uh, even the rewatching of this, I was thoroughly engaged. I think it, uh, I don't know. There's something to be said about the, the acting in this movie is really good, I, in my opinion. And I think it's like, I think it really carries, because even, when knowing the gags and when knowing the plot twists and kind of knowing how this movie goes, it's still a really fun and interesting watch. Um, mm-hmm. Sticky. Um, Sticky's going to get a one as well. Cause I mean, like there's definitely some scenes ooh, ooh. that are just, Ooh, just, I mean, all it's Andy, Andy acting the entire thing, him having the meltdown and all that. Like I had no idea that it was about his parents dying, which is fucking horrifying. Just imagine your parents dying and action. Um, <laughs> t-shirtable. T-shirtable is probably going. See, this is where the weird one for me. T-shirtable is probably going to get a point five for me. I do. I mean, there's so much stuff you could wear as a t-shirt. I just feel like I don't know if I would necessarily have just a Chucky shirt. Like I would maybe do like burnt Chucky or I would even have like the lightning bolt hitting the toy store. With like some weird, Ooh, yeah. like the, the weird like a uh, voodoo sign mm-hmm. that's on him all the time, like that makes up the lightning into it would be kind of a fun one. I just don't know, honestly. I just personal preference. So I you just, just named off three shirts that you would have. From <laughs> well, that's why. Well, that's why. That's why I get the point five. I just don't know if I would do it necessarily as Chucky. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if I'd put Chucky on a shirt. But I mean, there's definitely stuff there. Um, cockles, uh, cockles is gonna get a. I think Cockles is going to get a 0.5 for me. I really like it. It's really good. I think like because they skimped out on so much of the gore that I feel like it it would have gotten a full Cockle rating from me if they had just gone like just a little bloodier. You know what I mean? Like I enjoyed it, sure. but like I think it's you could get a little more horrific with it. Um, and then rewatchable is going to be. It's going to be a one for me because I mean, like, I think this is I mean, like, I didn't watch this for a while and now I keep on hating to say it, but just as a parent now, I'm like, wow, this is just like it hits different Mm -hmm. and in a good way where I'm like, okay, maybe it's more relatable for me now being a parent before where I was like, okay, well, this kid's fucked up, whatever. Um, Now I can kind of just be like, oh, shit, like I can view myself as the mom. You know what I mean? Like I get, it's a lot more relatable where I could be in the shoes of the characters, which I like a lot, especially on rewatches. So, yeah, it gives you four out of five. How does that feel? It feels good. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Good. I'm going to jump on over to Brian. Brian, how do you feel about this movie? Well, sir, I'm, (laughs) I will give engaging a one. He went Buffalo Bill. Oh, wow. Um, this is just what Brian sounds like. It, it, this is Brian. I, I tell you. <laughs> oh, her guys. It's Brian. Yeah. Which is who I am. Who is who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and is it sticky? Yeah, it's sticky. <laughs> but not super sticky. That's a point far. <laughs> oh, God. This is a little bit Sean Connery. What? This is just me. This is me, man. <laughs> I like how it's just devolved. <laughs> Brian is currently eating a, a donut. That's a donut. <laughs> I am not currently eating a donut. <laughs> what are we? T shirt? Well, yeah, you know I'm cutting one whole finger off from my t shirt, baby. <laughs> and what else do I have? I saw it's been a while since I did it. Cockles. Where are my cockles? I think they did an evacuation system. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? Would, Brian, what did you say? Uh, porn file. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. That's all I all thought right, you said. Cool. Fair enough. Yeah. And then lastly, Brian, you have to rewatch ball. I know. So rewatch ball. <laughs> I'll probably porn file before middle. 
Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah. All right. Well, Brian, thanks for popping in for your ratings. That was a little confusing, but that gives you just a three out of five. Does that feel right? Yeah. <laughs> I like how you went from Buffalo Bill to the Swedish chef from the Muppets. (laughs) Who are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Smirgen, burger, burger. All right. Um, In caging. I'll get a full one. I admittedly I did fall asleep on my second watch for this, but that was more to do with me than it was to do with (laughs) the the state that you were in. Because yeah, yeah, and I think it. It's just got a real good um, pacing to it, intention. Like we mm. talked about, some of the scenes are are really. Uh, I think the tension is excellent. Sticky's just going to be a point five. Uh, certain things I've remembered from it, but for the most part, not a ton. T-shirtable, definitely a full one. Chucky's cool. Bunch of cool stuff from the movie. Uh, the OG poster is cool. So throw one at it there. Cockles. This is a tough one. I Don't. guess I'm going to give it a one because it, it's more one than it is a point five. If that oh, makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll throw one at it there, but rewatchable is going to get a point five because I enjoyed revisiting it, but I kind of feel like I felt about it before. I'm not really rushing to get back to it either. Gives it four out of five, which honestly is higher than I expected coming into this. Um, I thought I'd be three five m- highest. So perhaps our conversation did something, oh, sure. or my mm. scale isn't working, or whatever. <laughs> but I'm I'm happy to leave it at a four. Cool. So um, that is where we're at there. Then we have, of course, our illustrious guests. Ooh. Oh, illustrious. Oh. I like that. you guys. <laughs> That's a good one. Who wants good. to go first? You want to go first? Sure, I can go first. Um, engaging. I want to give this a one. Um, I, mm-hmm. I I agree, Ross, with what you said of like the, the acting, especially, and this is really good. Um, both Andy and his mom are very believable in their roles. Um, and it, it, I mean, this is a great movie. So, yeah, I'll give it a one. Sticky, uh, I have to give this a one because. Like even before I had seen this movie, I knew who Chucky was. Like yeah, Chucky is just so sure. so iconic that I have to give it a one. T-shirtable. Uh, I would also give this a one because we do already own several Chucky shirts that we <laughs> wear <laughs> often. <laughs> um, cockles. I'm gonna give Cockles a one purely for uh, for the opening scene because Andy is the most adorable child to ever exist in a in, yeah. in anything that has been filmed and rewatchable. <laughs> uh, I would also give this a one because uh, we we oh, watch shit. it once or twice a year so this is a full five for me yeah and how does that it, feel in it your heart it feels perfectly appropriate wow noise am i next sergio is that me? oh yes you are. okay engaging now i'm gonna try to i think i'm gonna do a 0.5 and engaging only because i think the iconic moments really do pull it in for me which is the 0.5 but then like it, i i personally feel like it drags at some points with like the middle part where it comes to karen and the cop and he's not believing yeah. her and it's just back and forth and she has to go that whole montage you know like i kind of want to round it up and kind of get to the chucky part so like the meaty sure. meaty stuff um which i think is mostly uh, you know, I'm just talking about the first one, but the franchise overall, I think it gets more entertaining as it goes goes by. Absolutely. It gets way more Chucky yes. and way <laughs> less other uh, stuff. So I'll give yeah. it a 0. 0.5 for that, but Sticky for sure is getting a 1. I remember a lot of this stuff since I was a kid. I mean, you guys, I mean, I could, I was just retelling you guys everything from my mind <laughs> like I, that was happening in this movie, especially the, the, the iconic parts for me. So 1. For sticky, t-shirtable, one, love Chalsoy stuff. I want more stuff. If you want to, yeah, anybody who's listening, send me stuff. Send, send, send me Chalsoy <laughs> things. Anything Chucky, put it on a shirt. Um, 
cockles. cockles. Did it? Did it warm my cockles? Yes, it it surely did. Um, I'll give it a one. I love watching this movie, and that's why I'm gonna do like a one for rewatchable. So, oh yeah. Now that only gives you a four point five out of five. Does that feel right? It does because I I appreciate that this movie started it all but it is the first mm-hmm. one but there are sequels that you like more yeah down the line yeah. it mm-hmm. does get there are other ones that kind of just trump this one sure <laughs> I get you. well great uh let me jump over to the i think we only got one thing in the discord for ratings on this one let do tell i can find that real quick from our witchy brethren he gave us a uh, a fun little mix of different <laughs> things from the show rather than exactly our scale. So he's got engaging point my engaging point five in my heart. It's a one babysitter out the window. Survivability <laughs> one. Yeah, I'll survive this, Charles Lee. I listen to my kid and don't buy shit from hobos. <laughs> Rebo- rewatchable one. I watch this every few years. I forget things, but I never forget that detective getting blown away in the beginning with no damage. <laughs> Iconography Amazing. one. I grew up on the guys Chucky not stitched on on the guys Chucky not stitched Chucky. Mm. Gorometer. It's it's a point five there, bud. That's four Charles Lee's appendages taken. Now he's just a head on a good guy doll. Love it. And that is the only one we have. Other than that, it's a lot of gifts and talking and, oh, let me think about it. <laughs> That's <laughs> took, okay. Took too long. We're recording, baby. Exactly. So um, after going over there, let's see what the our average score is. 3.8, just outside the Shuttle Club crypt. Ooh. And, of course, we'll see if these change over time still a good score and like what do i have yeah. to do here i wasn't expecting to host that i know i haven't recorded <laughs> you're doing great that. you're doing great look you at you stunning you're doing, thank you. doing thank great you. thank you uh well i certainly don't have a final thank you for this <laughs> i'm not even sure we we're gonna keep that up anyway so we might as well just say that does it for the Ooh. Shuttle Club Horror Movie Pod Club meeting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed the landing. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Shuttle the Pod on Instagram and Slasher to stay up to date with the show. Follow Ross Purvis on the Instagram if you e. want to see his art and tattoos. And if you're in the Central Florida area, reach out and get tattoos go, from Go him. stalk him. Go over there and be like, hello. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, hey. Hello. I like, know you from Chuddle. Give him a bunch of fire and Do it. Uh, I am Chuddle the Sam on Letterbox. If you want to follow me there, Brian's on there too. Follow the Brian. Follow the Brian. Shuttle the Brian. Jesus. Uh, we it's late. are it's late. also all on Discord. The Discord is a fun place where we all hang out. You can also give us your movie reviews. We do all sorts of stuff in there. So please join the Discord if you like that. You can rate us, review us, tell your friends, do the podcast, do it here, do it there. We hope you've had as good a time as I've had right now. And until then, oh, th- avoid the time loop. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, thank you, Horror Bandwagon, for coming through. And uh... oh yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Remind us where we can see your stuff. Hey, (laughs) hey, hey guys, can you tell us where any person with uh, ear holes can follow Uh, you? If if you also want to forget about us, don't follow us on YouTube. (laughs) 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 No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Yeah, YouTube. We're the hard bandwagon. Pretty much everywhere you can. that sounds conceited. I'm like, just, just Google us. <laughs> just Google us. <laughs> uh, they won't, they won't say it. So I'm going to say it. They're kind of a big deal. Oh my so God. So if you just, if you just Google them, you're going to get a bunch of search results. Oh my God. Well, we, we also have a discord. Go to their YouTube. Yeah. We, yeah. we have a discord. We have a Patreon. We have, you can become YouTube members of, of our mm-hmm. stuff. So we got some fun I'm subscribed. Stuff. Podcast is around, but coming back. 
Yeah, it's gonna come back this year. Hopefully, we get we get some shuttle gasm over there. <laughs> Ooh, oh yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Tell you what, sounds like we'll be there. <laughs> uh, avoid the time loop. There we go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>